tonight's meeting is called to order and first um, notice of intent Howard um, Street uh, project has been continued as of tonight so that would be uh, continue to the next meeting. What's what is the date? September twenty uh, eighth. Twenty eighth. September twenty eighth. August. No. Is it August twenty eighth? August twenty eighth. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is um, meeting is being recorded on RCTV, and you can find that on Verizon thirty three and Comcast twenty two. www.rctv.org. So it is. 705 and we have a request for determination of applicability for 2019-11 220 Charles Street map 34 lot 181 jar music and this is a request for determination of applicability uh, Chuck Taroni and I um, had a site visit on Tuesday, and we generally um, agree with the wetland line that was delineated by Norse Environmental July 2nd, 2019. But as we were looking at the site, we did notice some debris off of uh, wetland flags 4A and 5A, and also uh, right just upgrading of wetland flag 9A, there was a um, leaf debris dumped there right off Charles Street. So what is this project? Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah. You're representing yeah. So, uh, just introduce yourself. Yeah, Brian Morin from CJM Builders, um, representing Brian. Um, so, we're proposing uh, a second story addition over this existing single family home. So, it's a vertical addition, strictly vertical, nothing going on. Um, no walkways being touched, no driveways being touched, no tree work, just strictly vertical. Um, we did propose a mouth sock around the property and a uh, soap sack in the catch basin at the street. It's just strictly second story. And I guess you guys did a site visit and found some mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how far the uh, work is? And so you're going up on the house, do you set up staging around the house for that? Um, it's basically going to be in the front. Usually it works in the front. Uh, being along with it, it's going to be on a station here. We can try not to drive or anything on the back here. But yeah, there'll be ladders. And, you know, think you'd be and stuff like that. any further than beyond the deck or just the limit of water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say probably wouldn't even go past. There, there'd be no reason for us to go back. You know, I could frame it up. Roof shingles, siding, so in close proximity. And downstairs would be, you know, downstairs up front. Up front, probably in the driveway, so don't you know, the damage of the grass. Um, I wanted to ask about any um, demolition. Are you going to raise the existing house? Are you going to gut it? Are you going to? No, like, we're just what's... taking the roof off, right at the second floor. Okay. And then add another floor onto that. Okay. And right now it's a single family. Once yep. we cut that off, one minute. All right. Uh, any questions from the commissioner? I guess the only other thing I was going to ask is any proposed fencing or any. For. I don't know. Sometimes people just for privacy purposes. Not at this time. No. Okay. So there's no more questions. The only condition. Well. well do we oh, ask, sorry, yeah. ask the community if they have any questions, any neighbors, any questions on this project? Okay, fair enough. So the only condition I hear is that the yard waste gets cleaned up with this project? Yes. Make a motion for negative, negative determination. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
item on the agenda. Do we want to issue a certificate of compliance for 270-0669 20 Kiley Drive, Matt 34, Lot 134, Nova Home Builders, Inc. I guess we're ready to sign. Close that and then issue it, right? So, uh, yeah, Kylie Drive was... Uh, it's right here, and um, this is something that at our last meeting we were supposed to sign, but we did a site visit, and everything is in compliance, and uh, we asked uh, the gentleman over construction to uh, to remove the hay bales and the silt fence. And, um, Becky went over this already, but I think that uh, the project was done quite nicely, and I recommend that we sign the order and uh, the certificate of compliance. Um, just to add, we didn't, we weren't going to require it. It's hard to cut back a little bit more, just to make it clear to look over like where the line that they need to maintain was. Right. And it started to overgrow, and you know, presumably there were going to be some bias. Yeah. The person we talked to is John McGee and he was going to do the work and he actually called me and said that that had already been uh, complete. I move we issue a certificate of compliance for 270-0669 20 Kylie Drive. Second. All those in favor? Okay, the next item on the agenda at being a little after 710 is a notice of intent 101 Willow Street, map 2625, lot 754543, Austin Prep School. And this is a uh, notice of intent in the public hearing is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. Hearing is conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. Commission will receive reports from the Administrative Technical Advisor and other town departments. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. And when you do that, please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. And I hope everyone signed in to the sign-in sheet in the back of the room. Um, I'd like to introduce members of the commission, starting on my right. David Pinnett. Anika Scanlon. Rebecca Longley, Chair. Carl Sacconi. Michael Flynn, Vice Chair. Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Everyone. My name is Evan Devendran. I'm from DeRosa Environmental. I'm here representing Austin Prep and their proposed project for the improvements to the lower athletic fields. I'm here with uh, members of the design team as well as a few members of Austin Prep. Um, the prep project proposes to um, improve the athletic fields and the lower fields of the, the lower fields of Austin Prep. Um, and this includes site preparation as well as the construction of a practice baseball field, construction of all new, um, of new all-purpose synthetic turf athletic field, construction of a baseball field grandstand and multi-purpose field storage building, construction of a walkway and landscape installation, construction of six tennis courts and tennis court building, and um, wetland, wetland replication. Um, and that is because a portion of wetlands is proposed to be filled. Um, here are the specific and this is the extra piece. Because of the river Oh, okay, yeah. <coughs> okay, so, yeah. 
the torch to talk okay. about the stormwater right. management and drainage. Uh, good evening. My name is John Barrows. I'm from uh, uh, Marsh Yonder and Associates, the project, uh, the project engineer. Um, uh, you know, up, what we have up top here is the uh, proposed uh, site plan for the site. Um, as under the Wetlands Protection Act and the local bylaw, we're required to um, uh, prepare a stormwater report and meet the uh, 10 standards uh, for uh, uh, stormwater uh, mitigation. Um, the two, you know, most important components of the uh, that we're required to, to meet are the, uh, the recharge uh, standard and the peak uh, runoff uh, standard. Um, maybe if we could uh, just briefly talk about what's proposed here. Um, proposal is for uh, six uh, tennis courts, a multi-use field, and a turf field, synthetic grass field and uh, a practice uh, natural grass field. Um, in the present condition, I don't know if we can go back one to the existing uh, conditions plan. Uh, I suppose that would do right there. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, presently, there's, it's a natural grass field with a couple of um, uh, baseball field, baseball diamonds, some track facilities, and, um, and a, uh, a grass uh, soccer field. Um, the site is uh, perimeter. The uh, perimeter of the site is on a uh, uh, bordering vegetated wetland uh, that uh, abuts or borders on the uh, Abajuana River. Uh, that is uh, down through here. There's a causeway from the main portion of the school to get to, to the uh, uh, to get to the site. Um, maybe yeah, it's, it's this right here. As far as drainage goes right now, um, drainage from the site leaves the site in three main uh, areas. Uh, we have uh, stormwater that runs off uh, to the uh, downstream side of uh, the causeway on into the Abitron River. Then we have um, another portion that comes to the downstream portion of the, I'm sorry, this is to the upstream portion of the uh, the average water river upstream of the causeway, causeway, and we have a portion that flows uh, down to the downstream portion of the site, uh, downstream of the causeway, and then we have uh, an area that flows off to, um, I don't have a north arrow here, but um, towards the, uh, I guess it's the municipal light property uh, in that direction. Um, Go, if you could go to the next slide, uh, uh, maybe go up one more to the drainage plan. There you go. Um, so the proposal here for uh, stormwater um, to mitigate peak and uh, the stormwater uh, recharge. We have three main components uh, that are going to um, catch the uh, additional stormwater generated by the project. Uh, the first uh, the portion of the site is going to flow through uh, some area drains and some uh, leaching uh, chambers into a bioretention area off the back of the property. Uh, that will be also an infiltration component to, uh, to help uh, mitigate the, uh, the, you know, the recharge uh, that's uh, required to meet the uh, standard. Um, the synthetic field um, will have a uh, crushed stone bed underneath the field, which um, will uh, be stormwater from the synthetic field uh, and has a overflow for you know, extreme events, like a 100-year event, uh, with a uh, head wall. And uh, that will be then flow downstream of the uh, culvert uh, causeway as it does today. Um, the natural area uh, proposed diamond practice field that most of that will flow into a bioretention rain garden uh, that will also have an infiltration component uh, in the larger events the hundred year event it would uh, flow over through the air into the uh, world the uh, there is you know a, a substantial amount of impervious being added with the with the uh, Tennis courts, uh, approximately about an acre and a half of new impervious. Um, fortunately, uh, the soils out there are very, very good. We've uh, done some uh, 
some soil testing out there and found um, uh, gravelly, coarse sands throughout the site. Uh, we're fortunate enough that we can take advantage of that with uh, you know some infiltration components in the uh, BMPs uh, to meet uh, the standards. Um, I think that's that pretty much sums up the uh, drainage. Uh, if you've got any questions on that particular part of the project? So um, we in the commission issued uh, some some comments, and I think those should. That should be talked about, and maybe we should go. I don't want to forget about those comments, and just to go through each one of those. And I don't know if it's better to do it now or to do it later, because we might be repeating ourselves if we do it later. So we have we have uh, been working with uh, planning board and um, and the town engineer. The town engineer has seen the drainage report, and he's had he's had a few comments, and he did put out a memo with uh, some additional um, clarifications that he'd like. Working with them to, to straighten those out, but they're relatively minor. Did you? Do you want to go through some of my, my comments? Yeah, let me turn them uh, Oh, this is not going to work. Oh, yeah, it does. It works this time, Mike. It's going to work. The first, the first uh, paragraph really gets at um, your replication of your filling of the wetland generally meets our requirements for providing, by providing a two to one wetlands replication um, but you're proposing uh, a seed mix comprised of grasses um, which I don't know if they are found in this wetland and I realize that you did the delineation in December when everything's kind of dead <laughs> and you can't see, you know it's a little hard to see with the herbaceous layer but I had um, suggested maybe you go you folks go back and now is a good opportunity it's kind of the height of the growing season to see you know what do you know DEP um, data sheets? Yeah, yes. we did some field data sheets. Well, that's great. You guys would all like to review. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. My name's Evan. Evan, did, did you also... Um, Thank you. Uh, I also, we also talked about putting in um, some additional um, plantings other than just the grass seed. Did you? Yeah, some shrubs and stuff. We did take a look at that. So on the, um, existing right now on site is a bunch of uh, viburnum dentatum, which is arrowwood, yep. which is, does really well in the wetlands and also silky dogwood. Mm -hmm. um, so we can certainly consider adding some shrubs if that's what you would like to the wetland. Yeah, like, no. Yeah. And we also took the wetland seed mix that we proposed, and we often use this other native wetland seed mix, um, which has soft rush, sensitive fern, riverbank wild rye, rough bank grass, foul bluegrass, and Virginia wild rye. If you guys, yeah, would I like would assume there'd be some sensitive fern in there. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, that's in, and it's more consistent with what's existing now in the adjacent bordering vegetated wetland. That sounds great. So we can certainly switch the seed mix up too. Um, and um, did we get a uh, did we get that printout on the seed mix or is that um, just I didn't. This was just for my reference. Did you send that to me? It's fine. Yeah, sure. Wanted to know what what are they calling that uh, that seed mix? Uh, we just call it. We do a custom wetland seed mix. Okay, um, so it's not off the shelf. You mean? No. Okay, we great. Do if you could just send me that. Ones. Yeah. I see. Um, so, and uh, are you folks uh, pr proposing any kind of um, uh, invasive removal or eradication? Yeah, so as part of um, the site preparation and the wetland replication, it involves excavation of what's existing. Um, and in order to make the replication area at the same elevation as the adjacent bordering vegetated wetland. We'll have to go down one foot below existing grade and then we'll augment the soil with the custom soil mix. And that includes getting a uh, whole plant removal technique of um, getting out the root balls of existing invasive species. I think um, we've had some glossy buckthorn, some Asiatic bittersweet, all honeysuckle existing there now, which would be great to remove. And then. Um, <clears throat> I talked a little bit about um, the um, 
some of the layers of the artificial turf, and I think you folks are going to give us ma material safety data. Which paragraph is that? Well, that's the uh, second to the last. Kind of one mm -hmm. So, in order to get this into the record, you'd have to go through each one of them. So, if you if you're skipping things, it's not going to be part I'd, of that. You know, Try to order them to different people. No, then just, okay. Okay, not a problem. But uh, uh, existing conditions plan shows runoff <laughs> runoff flows. Um, that soccer field into the wetland finger, which is where you're filling, doing the filling of the wetland, um, and, and right along the uh, proposed replication area. But I think according to the drainage plan, you collect all the runoff from the artificial turf, and it kind of goes basically a little over to the right. And we're a little concerned about not being able to give enough moisture or water to the replication area so it works well. Um, I, yeah, I understand um, where you're coming from there. Um, reality is there's very little coming off the site now because it's so flat, such good soils. Um, and, you know, uh, I mean, Evan can speak better for, uh, you know, better to what's going to help uh, keep this this area uh, thriving. Um, you know, the large uh, uh, infiltration area here that's going to you know, basically recharge stormwater in this vicinity. Um, I don't think it's a problem if you wanted us to move, and, and I know it's not, Chris has no problem with uh, Chris Andres, you know, the designer of this field, uh, to come over here with the, um, the outfall to this. The reality is this outfall is only going to happen in like 100 year events, uh, which is similar to what's going on right now. It's the very, very large events where, you know, the place gets saturated and you can still have, you know, just over rainfall where you would see overflow. But the general smaller storms, everything's going to end up recharging groundwater, which will, you know, find its way to this area so that we don't see it running out groundwater. So I, I think I think we're, we're in pretty good shape with that. But if you wanted to have this outflow fall come here, we can do that. So that area there that you're proposing, the well and Recreation area yep. is higher than the surrounding wetland by right. about think, a uh, foot or so, and so the thought is that it's getting a lot of um, you know overland runoff and it's feeding that wetland. So someone was talking about cutting that down. Yeah. To the to the grade that's in the wetland. Well, what's going to happen with the trees? Um, I'm not. Sh I haven't been to this site to see the trees there, but. Uh, we're going to save the trees. Do we know? We got a foot out of, yeah, the, I don't know how many are there, but there's <coughs> certainly six or so. Within the wetland right now or where the replication? Proposed, yeah, in the replication area. So if you cut about a foot out of that, you know, they're, they're going to be, the roots are going to be exposed and they're going to end up dying. So we needed, and I think this came up on the site visit, we needed you to <coughs> for the trees and give us a better plan of what's happening with the, that replication area uh, as far as those trees. Okay. Um, so we do have a tree policy. It's If, you, if you're removing them, that's fine, uh, as long as you work within the tree policy. And we just need for you to go through the tree policy and show us that you've met the tree policy, um, which is basically a one-to-one -one re replacement and you may be doing that uh, elsewhere. Um, Chris Latham for Austin Prep. Um, in the meeting that we had, Chris Huntress did mention, if you would like, we can do a tree-by-tree -tree review, and obviously, we, we, with your assistance, we can pick and choose which trees you think should be kept or which ones you don't think have as much value. Um, so. So outside of this area, are you talking about? I, I, inside my recollection was in, in our meeting that Chris said that we could do a, a tree by tree analysis in, in that area. When we were talking about dropping it. So they're cutting a, a foot away of the, of the base. Do you think the trees are going to survive? Any tree? No. So no. I, think, I think you need to count all the trees within that replication area. And anything over six inches, you need to meet the tree policy. And then any of the habitat, you need to replicate somehow or somewhere else. Uh, so you're in the replication area, but you're taking away buffer zone, and you need to kind of work on creating more habitat somewhere. And I think you have an opportunity 
by the uh, natural turf, natural turf field, you're letting something uh, grow back natural. You can plant some trees in there too. Absolutely, we could do some red oaks or red maples yeah. as well. That would be. Chuck, can I just comment, especially in that area to the southeast and near the replication area? You know, according to the lighting plan, you know that's the vicinity of. Uh, uh, that's the vicinity according to the lighting results plan that that has some higher there's just to interrupt there's a new plan <laughs> of course yeah so uh, okay. what you haven't seen yet so we could well put that based out. on what I based on what I had to review just um, you know addition I'm one of my thoughts is additional you know putting trees in there uh, I mean I'm not going to tell you what to plant but maybe additionally some some taller type of pine, yeah. you know, that's going to keep some sort of permanent shade barrier as well, a natural permanent shade barrier. I mean, you can kind of do a couple of things at the same time. I think for wetland areas, red maples or red oaks would do a little better than white pines. But I'll, I'll let you be okay. the judge of that. <laughs> and we always keep a little provision in the order that you know, if things aren't surviving out there or, or, you know, meeting the need of the wetlands, you know, we eventually ask for a replacement or additional trees, so. And I'll answer my next question. The, the surface of the tennis courts is uh, typical asphalt. Um, now, some of the, some of the, there's some filling, or not filling, but uh, asphalt being proposed within the inner and outer riparian zone, and I know that the applicant is providing 1,344 square feet of natural vegetation along wetlands 40 to A52, and then the 25-foot natural vegetation line. Uh, it's, an, again, another seed mix, and uh, I felt the application lacked mitigation for the loss of riparian habitat, but um, <laughs> Chuck, you're going to get into uh, the, the culvert. Um, we discussed that at, at the meeting, and I think that we're in agreement that that is um, pretty good uh, mitigation. Right. Um, opening up, you know, better habitat for the Arbogona River. Uh, and then artificial turf ha I, has a fill layer, and then um, we'd like to know if you've identified the manufacturer and if you have any material safety data sheets on that, that those materials. Chris Huntress has not identified the manufacturer yet. He says customarily what they try to do is they try to do that as part of the bidding process. Yeah. Um, Great. And then um, I think I'll answer my next question. You have an operations and maintenance plan for <coughs> dealing with any uh, materials that are generated or scuffed off from the... Um, artificial turf surface? Yeah, we, uh, well, we were at a uh, hearing on Monday, and we spoke uh, with Chris about that. He typically comes up with an you know, for, for the field. Okay. And, and you did that one, you did that for the other um, football field? We had an operation maintenance plan, um, and I, you know, I can't say that I've seen a lot of crumb rubber outside of that area, but they have a track around, you know, the football. Yeah. Um, and those are my comments. Now I guess we'll get into the fee waiver at the at some point, but that's the only that's one I see. There, there will also be an operation and maintenance plan for the drainage components. That's, okay. you know, part yes. Of the, yeah. Mm -hmm. You had some comments, Mike. Yeah, so I, I think even just taking a, a step back, so we had done a site visit for this uh, now three weeks ago, um, and we were able to walk this walk the site and see the see where the wetland line was, um, see where where everything was being proposed, um, and then as I think it's been mentioned here, uh, myself and Becky were invited by by Chuck. At some point, that the applicant had set up a meeting with the town to go over the project, and, and so um, he reached out to us to to come along and, and provide some initial thoughts of what we saw. Um, 
And that's kind of what's been referred to in this meeting. And, and so one of the things that I do recall from that, there was talk about the O&M manual um, and an operation maintenance and what has to be done. And, and I think it was brought up that a manufacturer hasn't necessarily been chosen. I, I, what I recall from that was the manufacturer also prepares the O&M of how to actually maintain the, the field because there are certain ways to, and I don't know if you guys speak that, there are certain ways to remove snow, there are certain ways to uh, manage it. Um, and, and so I think that comes along with the manufacturer was my recollection. Um, the, the big comments though from the, that, that, I, that I had, I, I started with the most basic and I thought, I, I think it was Dr. Hickey that had given a, a good background was why not grass? Um, and, and what I recall from that was a, a really a, a good, ex what I felt was a, an explanation about this field is their way to entice recruitment of the base. They get people to come to Austin Prep and say that they're selling themselves with a, with a field like this. Um, and not having, by having the grass, they're starting I forget Dr. Hickey said a date, but starting a certain amount of time later. Three weeks late. Three weeks late, thank you. Um, and, and I thought that was, when I looked at the alternatives analysis, I, I thought that was something that was missing, was this, well, what, why can't we just leave it as grass? But I, I, I felt like at that time, and I don't know if you guys could elaborate on that a little bit more, of, there was this, this good reasoning of why it was being done as turf like this, um, that I felt that, Something that I went in wondering, but I, I think it would be good for for understanding on the, on the record. Okay. Dr. Hickey, back there. I don't know. Uh, James Hickey, I'm the headmaster of Austin Prep. Uh, to address your uh, comments and, and questions related to the you know compliant return piece, one of the one of the complexities of Austin Prep staying competitive from an athletic standpoint is in a very defined window. So we are much, you know, like Reading Memorial High School, we're under the jurisdiction of the MIAA. And there are very defined start times and stop times when practice can begin, seasons can end. And because of the harsh New England winters, when there's snow on natural grass fields, there's not much you can do to uh, mitigate that. So um, many schools, as you know, they have the turf fields, which what they do is there's some, sometimes there's a removal time below a lot of schools too just help the snow melt is before winter sets in you put barrels all over the field and then when the snow has ended you remove the barrels and then the turf just keeps a little bit faster than natural grass and then the melt happens faster so in terms of some of the questions before related to you know mitigation and removal of snow that's always a last resort the first way to do it is just the easy way by positioning plastic barrels throughout the field during the course of the winter but the natural grass really inhibits us in terms of being able to have a competitive program and attract and retain you know, talented students to come to Austin Prep. We're at a disadvantage, and as many know, the private school market is very, very competitive. And they look at us and they say, okay, you have natural grass, it's not the best facilities, we can go over to another place and, you know, um, play there on better facilities in, a, in the defined period of time that the MIAA allows. That yeah, no, that's that's what I recall, and I, I thought that was. Uh, um, the, the other, the, the, my main concern or, or thing that I wanted to pay attention to was the drainage. Um, you know, the, the look go, doing the site visit, what you could tell was that I mean, obviously everything down there is very flat. The near the wetland, every the grass is very wet. Um, there's not a huge elevation change, and so we're working with a matter of inches of where everything is and, and so my questions mostly revolved around where the groundwater table was um, I mean it sounds like they have good soils for drainage um, but if there isn't a good separation between the groundwater elevation it doesn't really matter what you have for soil because there's no, no storage exactly um, and and so I th there had been talk at the site visit and even at that meeting that there was a geotechnical report or, or some sort of test test bits that were completed that had some indication of where the groundwater was at. I, I'm still still hoping that we could find that and understand that a little bit more clearly. I don't know if you can... Well, originally, uh, when the project uh, planning started, uh, there was a, a geotech uh, firm that went, uh, came down in borings all over the place. I think it's in the uh, in the stormwater floor, if you can see it. So they, they peppered the site with uh, borings. Um, 
we go into the soils portion of the uh, drainage report. And there was. Did you get the drainage report? We just. I think so. I think I just saw something in the latest packet that yeah. was the the most recent drainage report. Anyway, so so there was a you know pretty comprehensive uh, geotech uh, study done. Uh, they use it for many different reasons. To you know. We want to make sure that the soils can support the field and the tennis yeah, courts yeah. and the structures. Uh, but afterwards, um, we came through and just did some typical uh, test pits that you know we do for uh, stormwater uh, under DEPs, you know, with a soil evaluator. Yep. And you're right. I mean, it's basically the groundwater is is within uh, inches of uh, you know of the, the wetland grade. Uh, so for that reason, we've got very shallow BMPs here. I mean, everything is is with you know basically at grade or within a foot of grade. So we're not really, it's not like we have like large, deep uh, chamber systems. We just don't have that. Uh, the um, uh, crushed stone bed is really right underneath the field. It's not, it's not like we have, we're not going down three or four feet with it. It's only a foot deep. It's, that's why it's so expansive. The other thing is that there's a, there's a large drainage layer that goes uh, with the field underneath. So underneath the turf is actually all gravel. So you know it's it's basically one large infiltration bed. Yeah. So it, it's I think you know we we went through that with with Ryan, the town engineer, and he's pretty satisfied that you know we're pretty much keeping everything uh, you know on site on the within the, the limit of work, and and you know we're basically infiltrating everything that's that's being generated from uh, tennis courts obviously is you know there's quite a bit of coverage with that uh, and that's why we've we've come up with the uh, bioretention area off the back and some uh, dry wells uh, and, and leach uh, trenches along the back uh, but again those those are shallow they're not uh, we're, we're berming up the end we're not digging uh, very very deep into the ground out uh, in the back there so the majority of the stormwater that's that's being generated is from the tennis courts, um, so I guess, it's, and that is going to be um, conveyed to the bioretention area in the back that's, uh, that's, that's uh, going to be infiltrated. So, could you, um, the, do you recall how thick that how thick that is? Um, I think now I've gotten a couple numbers in my head. Yeah, it's it's I believe um, I have to, I, there's a detail on there, but uh, my past experience, you know, you have the, the actual synthetic turf, which is porous. Uh, then you have eight inches of, uh, of what they call a drainage layer, which is which is gravel. I mean, it's it's compacted, but it's a coarse gravel. Uh, and then you've got the um, you've got these finger drains or panel drains, they're called, that that lay on the on the subsoil. Um, which, in this case, from the borings and our testing, is, is, is a very coarse material. So it's, it's, it's um, you know, the majority of the water is going to just penetrate in, into the to the natural soil. But, you know, it's only after in the large events where you see those panel drains kick in, and anything that gets to the panel drain finds its way to the to the large infiltration bed, which is a foot below that. So that hatched area down there is a large crushed stone layer that's below the typical drainage layer of a synthetic field. So you're talking only 18 inches, and I believe on that end it's actually kind of in a fill right there. So you know, but you're pretty much at grade uh, with with the uh, drainage layers. Okay, you can see the same. So it's just not. It's not like we're digging out three or four feet and then and, and creating this. It's pretty much at the existing surface. Clarify. The, the idea here is to, to and that create a situation that's similar to what's going on right now. Um, and that's why we've come up with the three different BMPs or, uh, you know, areas uh, so that, you know, in the post-development condition, you know, we're, we're getting infiltration in the three main areas that are presently those two now. So when we say, so that there's a red on this drawing actually. So when you say infiltration bed detail, that is this hatched area? Yeah. Can I, can I get it, Mike? 
Right. Yeah, just, just a little bit over there. Yeah, I think it's on be on your plans. It would be L2. Which, yeah, yeah, there you go. So this is a little detail that shows it's not going to be here. So you've got an eight inches of, yeah. of a drainage layer, which is, which is gravel. Yeah. And then you've got a, a foot of a crushed stone below that. This is rumble, This hatched area here is the, is the only area where you can have a crushed stone. The rest of the field would be just this drainage layer. Just the eight inches. Right. Got it. Okay. So, and, and I think that's partially what, what I was thinking that this, it was this whole thing all the way around. No, it's just down here. So everything, if you see these these dashed lines are actually panel drains. Yep. And they're flat. I saw that. That's flat, you can see where that Which is standard yeah. for synthetic fields. Yep. Uh, and they all find their way down to kind of a main line here um, that flows with perforated pipe into uh, the drain of the uh, crushed dome. And Right now, what we have is a uh, we've got a little manhole here. This culvert or pipe is higher than that area. So what would happen is if this ever filled up, which theoretically in a hundred-year event you, you might see it rise to that point, it would kick in and come out to here. So that's why I was mentioning before that we're not really we're not really going to see flows out of here until you get to uh, the six-inch five six inch storm event um, and so your filtration event, not necessarily within the, that eight inch drainage we took the, we didn't take advantage of that, that drainage layer we're, we're taking okay as far as the, model, the hydraulic model goes yep uh, but the reality is it really does you know yeah, yeah. because everything is based on this one pipe coming out okay so that's just that's just one component so we've got the area that goes into the fire retention area over here and the same so no. on the are you finished, Mike? Yeah, no, that, I had a question about drainage. Um, on the original, so without the new surface, can you just go over where all the drainage, all the sheet flow went? Because now it's only going in one spot, and then that's going to be. Oops, and I know that it's not probably even ever going to come out of there, but it's it's being channelized into one outfall. So is there? Different areas, like the left hand side. Yeah, I don't know if you if you have the, the whole package on here. You could go to my uh, my drainage report on there. I have it on the thumb drive as well. If you want to see, I don't think the drainage your drainage report is not on there. Yeah, I don't. I might. For what? I can try to explain without without it, but um, I think. What is any of this part of it? No, it's not. It would be in the. No, I don't have the stone water report. So if you go to uh, the go to pre development there. It's tricky to see with the sty in, but uh, the site's broken into, and I, I went over that just briefly at the beginning. The site is broken into three main areas based on the grades that we determined from the existing condition survey. You have the area one that runs off uh, to the north, northwest, uh, towards this uh, that's running municipal light property over there. Mm -hmm. The portion of the site that flows down to downstream of the causeway and then the area that flows to the water along the causeway. So E3 should still because that's all natural service now. Yeah. Uh, portion of portion of it's going into um, into a rain garden mm -hmm. and the portion of it's not getting to rain garden. So there's a small area we want to show the post development I can okay. kind of show that you have a break. Um, E1 finds its way down to, I guess, if you want to go to uh, post development. Excuse me, well, how is the water getting to the rain garden? So if we can put the post development up, I can show you. That's okay. the existing. That's the existing. I understand. Yeah. I'm just wondering how is the water getting conveyed to the rain garden? Yeah, so, this is the post development. So, portion of the, this is now the proposed 
uh, baseball practice field, which is going to be natural uh, surface. Natural surface. Um, you know, it's going to be kind of a high point uh, through the middle of the of the diamond. Portion that flows towards uh, overland uh, with the, the rain garden, and then the portion that you know, is not going to, it's going to just flow. The area that's made up of the E2 or of the study point two um, is the field area that gets into the infiltration, and there's a, there's a portion of the site that doesn't get into the field, it flows by the field and gets down, so that, that would be the area of the field. Combination of a couple of things going on just to, to flow to state point two. In reality, you know, if you, if you look at the numbers, um, you know, in a, in a point two, in a 25 uh, year distant additions, the, the flows off there is 0 0.09 CFS, which is trickle, you know, for the whole area. It's, it's the A soils, it's flat, it's, uh, you know, good conditions with grass. So right now you don't have a lot of sheep flow flow. As far as study point one goes, again, uh, you know, the press courts are all designed to pitch towards a uh, infiltration dry wells and uh, infrastructure trench with a couple of area drains uh, to catch the first flush, and then afterwards uh, they flow into a bioretention area in the back, which will infiltrate until it's a certain point. The only time it doesn't infiltrate is uh, like a hundred year event. Flow through a, a, a wear over there, but it's a very, very small amount. Again, um, the reason why we couldn't, this is going to be a retaining wall along the edge of the post field, probably not very high. Um, There's no reason why we couldn't have that in the of this presentation here. That's preferred. This, you know, this is a overflow, so it only kicks in when Yeah, I mean, you know as well as anybody, it's, it's groundwater that, that sustains so replication areas. It's, yeah. it's not, the, you know, the flame flow. That's why, that's why DEP pushes us to, to, yeah, to so infiltrate as much as we can. Material close proximity to the wetland and the heat and the stone and it's all that. It's different problems now, so I'm not sure about where that should go at this point. Because I know the football field doesn't seem to flow at all. Right. Yeah, this, I mean, this is this is a large yeah, infiltration. Is this is where it is. It's, is this not uh, equated to a septic field or, or whatever. It's just a giant, you know, so they do that so obviously so that you don't lose rubber and whatever. That's an element to safety. Though. But in reality, with good soil underneath, you're not going to see flow up from it. I think ultimately we're going to drop down. I don't know. Thing. Yeah, well, it, it just turns the question to what I said, you know, do you want do you want that stone, do you want that more disturbance in that area, which is going to take away, I mean, where it's going to go, and it has to have a it has to have some riprap. Yeah. So, I mean, it would be better just to leave where it's at. Leave it where it's at. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Since okay. we're on, can I just ask a couple questions about um, drainage and um, overland flow and stuff? So, um, the... the I, and forgive me, I think there's a couple of reports some I don't I don't have. Um, but anyway, the retaining wall and the asphalt walkway along that southeastern edge um, of the property, it it looks based on the information I have um, that the pavement is just going to go to a split rail fence and then to the retaining wall. Um, which looks to me like there isn't going to be curbing. Um, is that one of your questions? No. It's a new one. It's okay. a new one. Okay. It's a new one, so I thought I'd start with that. So okay, fine. Right. Um, so can you sort of talk about, um, I mean, even, even uh, all the way up to the tennis court, like all the pavement, all the asphalt paving, um, that sort of southeastern side of that pavement. Um, is there going to be any curbing there to to stop 
Maybe if we put up the uh, that. Most. Uh, well, that's probably not the best one. If you go back to, to uh, sorry, the other. Chris's. Oh, yeah. That's fine. I just. Um, uh, we have to go. Left to go. Use this one. Go back to the drainage. I guess the drain grading drainage plan. No. There. No. There. Is that the one you want? Yep. L2, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, obviously the scale, for the scale, you really can't see that the, uh, the fine fine grading here, but the intent is to have every, you know, all the uh, walkways pitch into the fields because we're infiltrating it. Um, so, you know, we'd have to have 2%, less than 2% pitch to it. I mean, this area is going to all be untreated. It's it's not like you're, you're going to have people out here walking in the winter, so it's not going to be salted or, or treated. So right. it's, it's going to be... Uh, right. Uh, a part of what I'm imagining is, um, you know, those artificial turfs, they do have, from time to time, they do have, like, little tiny bits of rubber. Well, that's what it's from, made of. That carry. That, that, crumb, whatever that, that right. carry, I should know. I, right. my, so my son plays on it. And it comes out when he empties his bag. So. Right. There's actually an edging <laughs> on uh, part of the field, and Chris is the expert on that. He's not here, but uh, they put an edging on there to, to grab the turf. Uh, but and then the sidewalk would be above that. And the idea is to pitch it all in there so that we don't have things flowing out. Uh, okay, and, and any sort of, I mean, besides post and rail, any other fencing to catch like wind blown debris? Um, because otherwise it's all blowing. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, blowing that's, all that's over the place. Question. Yeah, yeah, there is a fence that came up in the meeting. There's a fence along the end field. I think that's what she's saying. Is it, I think it's a post rail. It's post rail. Post rail. G Jim, do you know what the fence it's is? Labeled made as on? post is right. Post Which, uh, rail. Uh, uh, yeah. Along the perimeter here, against the split the rail fence. Yeah, and the uh, rotating yeah. wall. We were, there were there were different conversations related to that. We had conversation about putting some sort of mesh behind it, both also on the, the south end, the south end of the field to prevent falls and so forth from going into the wetland. Area. I think you're more concerned with windblown materials. Sure. Right. Sure. I mean, all along, I mean, f f and my concern goes from the edge of the tennis court fencing, kind of near the building, all the way to the pathway and all the way along the 25 foot line so this to is the be, north of that. This area is going to be left natural as it is right now. Um, it's pretty thickly vegetated yeah, with shrubs a, and stuff, stuff big, so we uh, can catch burn. it. Everybody up here is quite a bit higher. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. You know, that there's a natural burn right. there presently. Um, right. The is going to be a here. Yeah. So, so, so that in itself is. Yeah, I'm not so, I mean, I know the tennis courts have to be pretty well fenced, and I'm, I'm not so concerned about the tennis court. I'm a little more concerned about the open edge of pavement areas, the open like, areas right. that are not fenced. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is going to, there'll be a, like, you can see the tree line here, and I think the idea is to be here, so, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, Beautiful school. It's very well maintained. I don't think you're going to see any kind of trash or, or issues there. Um, so, Nika, if I, if I just so I walk in that area. Yeah. And I've been on a couple site walks yeah. and over the years too, checking out the upper campus and all. They take care of their trash pretty much. Uh, I did see some, but it wasn't a build. There wasn't a build up there. But I understand having a fence would would help that. You know, the split yeah, rail fence doesn't. There. Doesn't it's really block anything. Contained. But uh, yeah, it's a good, yeah. a good comment. But there is somebody doing a lot of uh, pickup. Yeah. And that that low vegetation layer kind of stops the cups and whatnot. Yeah, and and to sort of address it, also, I don't know what's been discussed or proposed beyond what I see on my plan, which doesn't look like there's any structure proposed. But you know, is there anything? That is is going to be put along the 25 foot line um, to the north of the athlete, of the turf field. Uh, I, I believe it's you know it's going to be fixed here with you know grass and a mix or uh, what through here you mean? Yeah, through yeah, there, um, like any sort of fencing there or um, no physical barriers, but that's where the zone of natural vegetation is proposed, so it's going to be naturalized with shrubs, seed and mix. Um, 
not so much shrubs, but whatever comes back naturally if there's shrubs, but it'll be um, an upland seed mix. So is that 25 foot zone gonna be even mowed? No, or no, not, not mowed. No mowing, not. not. So whatever grows kind of takes. And, and wool takes hold. Never mow it so you get the woody material coming in later or you're is that kind Once of a year. Okay. Yeah. So I mean and we also Fall. mentioned at the beginning of this meeting that if, if that replication area you needed to reproduce or put some other trees, this was this was the area where we wanted them. Uh, more tree yeah, oh to so put more have, trees there. Yeah, okay. Along that area. Okay. Yeah. So um I'm gonna Regarding my comments, I'm just going to jump to comment five because I think a lot of stuff's already been addressed. Um, oh, I'm already there, I think. Go ahead, uh, Elf. Uh, says, how are, how are they going to protect the surrounding habitat from windblown trash, occasional litter, and trespassing? Oh, so we're already there. Uh, any maintenance, emergency vehicles going to be driving down there regularly? Do you have to make any provision for that? Actually, that might be a whole, like, sort of another, before I get... I withdraw my question temporarily. Um, I want to look at the wetland replication plan. One of the items, item eight, says that replication area will be temporarily irrigated for a full growing season. I guess I'm wondering how you're proposing to do that. Are you going to hand water? Hand water, like you're going to walk, like drive a little golf cart down there with gobs of, or are you going to install a small temporary well near there, or like how's that? Uh, just kind of like if it's going to be watered, it's probably going to need a lot of water. Um, well, it'll be at the like, level of the water table, so <coughs> not as much as if it was an upland area. But we do have a water tote that we keep in the back of the truck that we can drive up and connect hoses to if, if need be to hand water them. So sort of like a little mini water tank that you drive down and... Yep. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just wanted to get a sense because if it's it's kind of a remote area and that that looks like a, a pretty substantial amount of watering um is the grade coming up at all in that in that area coming up yeah you in the natural infield uh, practice area and the uh, area that you're just going to leave natural mm -hmm. do that all along that's probably going to be it's going to get enough water from groundwater over just there enough away. yeah so Okay. Um, let's see. Um, the structures here, are they all slab on grade? Yeah, the one uh, tennis uh, facility there, uh, it's my understanding that it's going to be a slab, yeah. Okay, and the bleachers and the right, be dugout and the bullpen. The footings and the for them, obviously, they'll have to get out four feet. To yeah, yeah. Um, um, so I had a question about tree, how many trees proposed to be removed. I think that's kind of already on your notes. Um, and what's going to be the comprehensive planting plan post-development? Um, I mean, we, we know what the wetland replication is, but I think a little bit more of what's proposed to be planted exactly where within the 100 so it would be valuable. Uh, in terms of the landscape plan, I think that was included. P1 in the packet. Is that what you're You're more interested in the wetlands replication area? Um, the, I kind of wanted, I see the wetlands replication area. I was kind of looking more broadly just across. Yes, so there's there is one, but I haven't, I, d I don't have it. <laughs> okay. Can't on. explain why, but I don't have it. I'll get it. But there isn't meeting. anything in the replication area yet for that one. It was just the seed mix at the time of. Right. The, that um, we prepared. Yes. So we'll add some shrubs. I've seen people with that. I've seen this plant back here. I just haven't, I haven't seen it myself. Yes. Anika, what's the number? On uh, the it's P1. 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 So it's after all the construction details in the packet. Okay, so upland seed. So are any trees getting taken? So, so. That was a question. Um, and they are going to do a, um, an evaluation. In inventory. Inventory. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. And then comply with our okay. replacement you know, um, plans. And then um, electricity, is that going to be underground or overhead or any underground conduits for that? 
there, yeah, there'll be some underground conduits for sure. Um, <coughs> how it gets out uh, over the causeway, I'd have to um, maybe go in overland down the causeway and then go underground once it gets into the site. Uh, okay. Have to. I, have, I wasn't involved with the electric. Uh, I'm and, just sort of thinking underground, more underground structures and fill, and I'm not sure. And what's going on with that? Yeah, those are typically pretty shallow. I mean, that's generally just. Uh, uh, Dr. Um, do you want to say something, Dr. Hickey? Yeah, I, uh, it's my understanding that adjacent to the school's property, there's an egress or pathway that uh, is owned by the town or Reading Municipal Light, and that would be a. Uh, a potential area where uh, electricity and power could come oh, into the okay. It's a little uh, right at the end of the end of the school, right? said this yes. as well. At that was my right. recollection that they, on the site walk, they mentioned this to us that okay. utilities were coming in and out from that side. Okay. And the bathrooms will have uh, tight tanks. The bathrooms? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And um, like septic? Or? No septic, but they don't, they're just yeah. a box. Storage. And they have to pump them out. Okay. And they don't right. go anywhere. Just so you know, Chuck, right now, um, there's no bathrooms that are oh, we're not doing that. No, when we were talking about originally, we were sort of brainstorming, we were talking about okay. tanks. Or that. Right now, there's, so CPDC on Monday night approved the site plan review. Yeah. And we do not have bathrooms as part of the site. So plan. no plumbing, no sinks, no water fountains, no. Okay. Um, it was. You, you didn't make it up. It was an original. No, no, I, <laughs> that's fine. Thank you for that. <laughs> so I guess the last question is just the emergency vehicles. Is, um, it's that question. Is, is there? I imagine the emergency vehicles would be pretty much what they have for emergency vehicles down there already since they're existing fields. Uh, they, they already use them for sports fields, so pretty much be the same you know, operation that they do already. Is it like a, like you see on the NFL network? Golf, golf car? cart? It's a, yes. like, and then that drives golf it to the car. side and then right. they'll pick them up right. at the, uh, I guess the causeway. And, and just for the, I, I don't know if you get the comments that the CPDC does, but the police report department and both the fire department, they were okay with the plans. They basically said they had no comments based upon. Okay. No, that's, that's good I, to know. I figured that, but I just had to ask. Just some general questions. Um, materials, where are you going to store, are you going to store your materials um, on that site and where in particular? To construct all of the oh, stuff? Like the staging area? Um, yeah. That's a good question. Um, I, I imagine that you probably use the practice field as a staging area. You know, stay obviously 100 feet away. Um, you know, Chris would typically come up with, uh, you know, a construction uh, management plan as part of that, um, part of the, the plan. And obviously, we'd have you know have to work with the uh, with the site plan and, and you know, the contractor to find out what the most appropriate way to attack the site would be um, there is you know, a he, larger area on site that's outside of the 200 foot riverfront so we can kind of manage to keep it up as far away as possible from the water. Um, and, uh, kind of how, how big is the uh, construction equipment you're going to be driving across that causeway and into this area does anybody know yeah, I mean, my experience, I've seen a few of these built, uh, you know, your typical bulldozers and, and larger excavators, um, you know, similar to what would be used for road construction or um, house construction subdivisions that you see in sub uh, local subdivisions. Nothing extraordinary, I, I guess, is what it... Um, is, that, is that culvert strong enough? Yeah, so it looks like there's going to be many trips taking out the organic layer that's out there. Yeah. And you're just going to bring that somewhere else, so... I don't know what, how many truck. Yeah, they probably have to work with some temporary plates or something on the causeway. To tie. You, you're right. This uh, right now, there's just uh, as you know, just uh, I think they're. Uh, and there's no cover over that. Uh, cover, so they probably have to do some temporary supports of some sort so that they can get in and out of there. I think not necessarily for the commission, but the community might like to know generally, kind of how long would this construction 
uh, take place, the duration. I think Dr. Kiki you talked about that. So, uh, based on some preliminary conversations with the contractors, uh, they would plate the roadway to you know to protect it because there would be vehicle traffic going back and forth. They're anticipating the construction project could take three to four months, depending on you know environmental conditions like snow, rain, heat, cold, and, and so forth. Um, thank you. And then one last question from me, and I think maybe Mike Mike picked it out. Um, it doesn't sound like it's much of a, a wetlands um, concern, but it is in, in a way, and then that's the, the lighting into, and you had a, um, a lighting plan, and we did notice that in the replication area, there were a little bit higher lumens going into that area. Than, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I, I think we... I mentioned this. I'm certainly no lighting expert. Um, <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> it's just higher numbers than we you know, we get these plans out often, and it's just numbers on a page. <laughs> For me, you know, it's, it's another language, but the, the numbers seemed higher than we typically see of what was actually making it in, into the wetland. And I think there was going to be a second look at that. Yeah, and so um, w what you're seeing. Well, uh, Chuck, you just had it. <laughs> trying. trying <laughs> so, to so, um, Chris Huntress uh, basically spoke with Musco, who is the lighting folks, and they were able to redirect and reconfigure some of the lighting. So it actually, uh, if I remember what Chris said directly, it, it basically reduced the lighting from what you folks had seen previously and what was part of the, the first application. It reduced it by 50%. Chuck, could so. you zoom in on the replication area, please? Is that the, um, is that mine? That's pretty different. So yeah, these were in the, these were in the teens to maybe even 20s, I think, something like that. Yeah, that's pretty different. So, they've got it way down. That's pretty different. Um, it's obviously without, you know, the tree. Yeah, I guess I guess the one remaining concern I, I have is the erosion along the causeway due to construction and potential long-term erosion at the junction between the causeway and the pavement. Sometimes if the grade if the causeway and the, the grade near that initial pavement proposed is is not adequately managed you could see some runoff erosion around the pavement. And so I just see that whole area of the pavement through the causeway as being, you know, high potential for erosion if it's not managed well. I could see that. So rain hits, rain's hitting that paved area and it's the, the area that it's likely draining to is down towards yeah. the causeway. And I know that the applicant has said they're going to grade all pavement towards you know the infiltration area um, but if that means bringing the grade near the start of that pavement up that means increased erosion on the downhill side of that between them the causeway so it's a little you know, I think it's a little undefined to bring it up too point. much uh, you know there will be a, a small area of an apron that probably will be pitched back towards um, you know and it's a very coarse soils out there right now I don't know if you've been out there um, and it's flat, it's level. Um, you know, the erosion, I think, would be more by vehicles and, and what have you. I, I just don't see a lot of runoff running through there. And I think it would be easily managed. It's, it's not something that, you know, you have a lot, large watershed that, you know, you just can't stop the water from coming. Um, I think it's very, you know, it's a, it's, it's a small area. And, and I think with, you know, some, some good gravel, uh, I think you probably maintain it. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're going to keep your eyes on it. I mean, they, they don't yeah. want it to wash out as well, um, you know. Uh, and again, just re remind me, which way does the water flow? Because sometimes I kind of think there's river. like a divide in there, isn't there? And sometimes, depending on the flow, it goes one way, but sometimes it goes. I think it's very flat and it might appear that way, but it, it flows south. Because I've been on Willow and it's flowed. <laughs> yeah, I've, every time it's I've been flowed, there, it's, it's flowed it's away from Austin Prep. Through the uh, causeway, in other way. And if you look at the floodplain maps, um, it drops off quite a bit after the 
the, no, yeah. the, the elevation. elevation. Goes towards West Street. The elevation yeah. on, on so this side of the west. The north okay. side is 83 for the 100 years. Right. The, oh, the causeway right. is, yeah. is, the, is the reason. But sometimes it's really stagnant. Oh, yeah. Willow Street looks sometimes, yeah. But Willow Street is... I know that there's a lot of little East. drainage that goes backwards well, and forwards. It's very and, flat, yeah. Yeah. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Just while we're on that last range. So the drainage plans that you showed us were, were very, very helpful. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that. Um, I don't know if it was submitted to the, the commission. I'd, I'd just like to make sure that that, that gets in. I, I, I thought that explains it very uh, well. And, and maybe that's what Ryan has looked at. Part of the stormwater at. report, which should be part of the notice of 10 packs. I assume that that was all. <coughs> maybe just to make yeah, it as yeah, yeah. you know, we are We are working with uh, Ryan to, to tweak a few little things. Um, and uh, there'll be a new report put out to satisfy his comments. Okay. So make sure that it gets to the commission, obviously. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, the town is uh, is waiting for a report from AECOM on more information on the Abichona River. Huh. And about what you were talking about was there's been some discussion about using the causeway and doing something there with the culvert to help out um, flooding situations on Willow Street. So we're waiting for that AECOM report. And I, I think someone was going, I don't know if Chris or <laughs> Dr. Hickey was going to talk about that uh, potential mitigation. We, we've been, um, we've actually been talking with the town uh, about the culvert since. Is it okay uh, to put that uh, plan up? The end of May. Um, and so basically we're, we're, we're still, I think the town's waiting to see what the AECOM report says and we're sort of waiting to see what the town says and um, we're not, we're obviously not opposed to it. The question is, is the logistics, how, how it happens. Um, we are relying upon donors for the entire project and we believe that we have some donors that would uh, allow us to use some of those funds for that purpose and we've been talking with the town about how how that can actually happen uh, because there is a recognition uh, by the town that there was a public benefit to it and we're basically trying to work hand in hand with them and them but we're not we're not opposed to the idea of uh, work being done in the culvert at all. Yes. So I see two things here. I think the culvert would be great. I think we generally don't want to see paved surfaces in these areas. I think right now that that area you can see is somewhat of a, can, get, can get messy and should create its own erosion issues. So I think even just creating a place out to this because there's going to be access. They're, they need access. There'll be a uh, lot of traffic. I, I would assume. I think yeah. The, the Foot traffic. <laughs> I think doing this as part of it and doing it now is, is you know, whether it's contingent or, or attached onto this project, I, I think is a, a good idea rather than deciding you need it sometime down the road. Any other questions from? Hi, uh, Dave. Did you want to go through your questions or? I know you already answered one of them. The 50-foot line was self-imposed. The other one is, I, I still, um, I didn't do the site visit because I, I had a knee replacement, so I wasn't going out there. I didn't go out there, so I just mentioned to Mr. Taroni that that a um, overlay drawing of what is there currently versus what is being proposed would have been helpful to me. I think it actually is it's kind of shaded. It might be hard to see, but uh, I think the proposed plan has uh, existing additions underneath. It's kind of grayscaled, so it might not be grayscaled enough to, to see it, but it, it, the intent was to have. You know, there's not much going on out there. There's a couple of diamonds. That's about it, really. Okay, my, yep, mine was in black and white, so I, I just... Yeah, if you could see, really I mean, see. It's, it's hard to see, but there's actually, these are all uh, existing spot shots. And go up here. This is the corner of the existing soccer field, so it's there. It's just a little tricky to see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can see the diamonds there. It's the 
it's it was I think uh, actually our firm did the uh, existing editions and there was some sporadic uh, lining of the soccer field at that point uh, so we picked up as much as we could to try to locate the soccer field as it exists right now I say so I still don't see it but <laughs> yeah I mean you can see the two dugouts right there the no. <laughs> but I'm not seeing it so but you that's all right all the two boxes I see yeah, the two boxes the dugouts, yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess I mean I, I can I can work with uh, yeah. Chris to uh, to get that grayscale up so it's a little more evident I don't see anything labeled there either but if you yeah. see the dugouts I'll believe you we need to fix that prescription over there yeah <laughs> no, I, yeah we can we can we can it just it when I looked better. at it, that was something that would have been helpful to me to sure. see. Oh yeah, that's, that's the reason why what was existing that. versus what was proposed. Right. No, I understand. Any questions from the community? Yes, sir. Steve Chapman, 66 Causeway Road, a direct abutter behind the tennis courts. I just want to follow up on the comment that was just made to the college you be part of the project. It'll, will it be the intent of your commission to condition that as part of this application? I think that's going to be a discussion that, that, that I think the commission has to have. I, I think it, it may be, well, I think I'm of the opinion that it, it should be a condition of the project that something there is to occur. I don't know whether it, it is specifically tied to timing of this, but I think I'm open to discussion there, but. I think we were looking at that as, as mitigation for impact to the riverfront area. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the timing, but there were, I, I think there's some options. Um, I know that there would be a lot of engineering involved with that type of, uh, you know, pavement and, and and, well, we've got to wait until the A8 calm um, report is done. So that's going to take some time, too. But if it's conditioned in the project, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to happen specifically. With it. It, it at least says that you know, we're, you know, we're, we're making a decision on this project with the understanding that something is going to happen. Um, and, and, and what we ex somewhat what we expect, you know, whether that can change my real Based on engineering, you're sure, but yeah, we don't know what it is. Some expectation that that's some sort of conversation. So it may continue. So, in order to issue your certificate of compliance, will that pavement be in, or it will not be in? So I, so this is again my, my opinion before discussion of the board. I would make it a, a condition that we wouldn't issue a, a, a certificate of compliance without that piece completed. Mm -hmm. Do you see the culvert, um, what you're talking about, right, as a benefit, a public benefit with this project, something for I, the community? I do not comment on that. I don't know. Are you in a butter? Yes, you said it was in a butter. So, <laughs> but I don't know the hydraulics why, of the system. I no, I was just wondering why you uh, talked about this. It's more from a programmatic standpoint of what you're going to be approving, what's going to be in your file, your order of conditions and what the, the school will require for the Certificate of Compliance. Okay, and if I'm that hearing, that's if there helpful. Might, if there might be a funding shortage. Yeah, that's helpful. I, I was just I don't wondering want the school to get into a bind that they're not going to be able to get their Certificate of Compliance if they don't have the money to do the paving and the culvert or the timing is not appropriate to put it in. You follow me? If, if, if you're waiting on AECOM and you're waiting for your town engineer, you sort of tying their hands if they want to build this project and get it done in four months. So, but we're not, we're not, so the Conservation Commission needs to look at the environmental aspects of this property and there needs to be some checks and balances to what's happening and essentially they're removing all the grass and they're putting down synthetic turf. There's got to be some equalization. The just, just thing that just the record, I'm a stormwater engineer with 40 right. years experience and sat in your community. So I'm not just talking to you. Years. Sometimes you mm -hmm. ask questions so everyone else understands what's going on. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be some equalization out there, and the, one of the screaming problems in this area is the flooding. It's been identified by the uh, by the engineering department, and 
it's obvious when you go out there that, that uh, this causeway at some point was put in through the swamp. And there's a 15 inch culvert kind of draining that one area. So to correct this now during this big project makes a lot of sense. And that's all, that's all understood, but I'm not aware that the plan has been submitted to the commission. And I'm not sure how you can. So we're just bringing it up. Correct. So because. Right, we'll, we'll continue. Correct. So. And, and, and so uh, I guess I personally see a, a mechanism where an order of conditions is still, could still be issued. Mm -hmm. And with, with this as a condition, and, and that this project in construction can go forward, understanding that. The, a, a completion or a certificate of compliance would not be mm -hmm. submitted until this this commission was satisfied that that area was taken care of. So, so the part we're drawing in on um, is where the project, the mitigation for the project, has to be commensurate with the size and scope of what's being done out there. And the only thing where we have being done out there is they're allowing like a ten foot strip of grass to go natural and the rest is turning into you know saran wrap so that's why they're keying in on this piece and it makes sense and it needs to be implemented into this project and the commission's brought it up so it's up to the applicant to discuss it but ultimately i don't think that whole you know if the commission would vote, i don't think that holds up order of conditions it would hold up on the back end. So, yeah. Okay. So in our discussions, and, and the only thing I would say is, you know, from an order condition, from a, a certificate of compliance standpoint, Austin Prep, you know, this isn't a developer or, a, a, you know, they're not going anywhere <laughs> anytime soon that we understand. I mean, ultimately, it's it's something that's going to would sit open and you have to hold them accountable to that piece of it. But that doesn't mean, I guess from my standpoint, I don't see a reason, as long as it's conditioned, I don't see a reason to hold up an order of conditions until we have a final design from AECOM or a, you know, a, a, a com completely final plan of how big that culprit is. Chris? Yeah, if, if I may, um, the truth of the matter is, is the whole project is dependent upon donors. And if the donors' kids graduate, that money is going to evaporate, all right? And this project's not going to happen. And so I would request the board follow what Mr. Flynn's suggesting because the reality is um, this project, we all believe that this is, I, I think we all believe this is going to be a benefit to the town. Um, I mean, if I go through the, the pros, I mean, this is going to improve water quality substantially in this area. It's going to basically, we're talking aquifer protection district, which I know the town doesn't really have its own water wells anymore, but the reality is, is this is still, still the aquifer, aquifer protection district, and it's going to improve the water still quality. Reserve supply. And the groundwater supply, right? And so it's going to improve the quality. And in addition to that, it's going to improve um, this plan is going to improve the flood control and prevention of, of storm damage. I mean, just to quote the August 1st memo from the town engineer, he basically said the drainage design is more than adequate to handle the 25-year storm, and he noted that it reduces the 100-year storm flows. All right, so right there, there's a benefit off, off, off the start in terms of the public good. Um, I'll defer to the engineer in terms of the surface flow. But in terms of what we have here, what's being proposed is consistent with the town's master plan of 2005 and also the open space plan from 2012. And this is going to be a public benefit. I mean, we're talking about educational facility, religious facility, physical education. It's going to be available to members of the public, citizens of Reading. And obviously, if we want to talk about dollars and cents, at the end of the day, Austin Prep is absorbing students that would otherwise be in the public school system that is going to cost the taxpayers of, of Reading more money to educate them. And so this is a public benefit. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
with Broadway uh, butter and the tennis courts. Could someone explain the far end of the tennis courts? What is that structure? Um, I heard something about uh, runoff of water or possible electricity source or what's happening at that end of the tennis courts? Uh, I can speak to the uh, drainage structure of BMP. Um, it's going to be a uh, basically a, a basin that's going to uh, receive uh, any stormwater that's not absorbed in the uh, infiltration trench and, and dry wells that run along the uh, higher end of the higher end of the site here. Uh, everything flows down here, so it's it's a couple of, couple foot deep basin. I'm going to firm up a little bit here so it, it would receive the stormwater in the large events and infiltrate the, the stormwater down in, into the soil. Yeah, we've done test bits out there and it's very, very good coarse soils that uh, just will trade. For clarity, it's going to be grass slopes, grass base. Oh, it's a bioretention area, so it's it's going to be a mix, a sand mix uh, vegetated with, you know, this, if you go on DP standard uh, stormwater uh, handbook, they have a list of recommended plantings in that area, you know, in a bioretention area. So, um, yeah. so it sounds like it's not a structure. No, 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 it's, Correct, not, a, it's, not, a, it's not a structure. So. Okay. We show this. Base and not a yeah, the, we're, we're actually working with the uh, town engineer on that, so it's, it's, it's going to come up slightly. It's not going to be a, a, as deep, and it might, might, grow, might get a little bit uh, closer to the tracks. Uh, and I don't think we, this, it's not necessary to have a head wall there. Uh, these plans show a little head wall. This, that's really not going to be necessary. We'll just have a, uh, a mitered end to the pipe uh, with some crushed down uh, riprap uh, to absorb the, the water. But there won't be any. Yeah, there won't be any physical structure there. Okay. And just one more uh, quick follow-up question. Um, I'm assuming that all the construction vehicles will be coming in from uh, from Austin Prep, um, and they will be. Do I understand that there will be no construction vehicles coming in? Um, Osprey Road and the fence where the tennis courts are. Will all construction be coming in from Austin Prep? Vehicles. That's my understanding. Is that correct? That's what I understand as well. That's what's indicated on the site preparation plan. There's a plan S1. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any more questions for the public? Hearing none. I move we continue with this. Just um, when we began the permitting process, as you know, the town you know made us aware that there's a public interest with remediating the culvert, uh, the culvert, doing what we can. So that wasn't anything that we initially considered, but recognizing that this is potentially a win-win scenario, we engaged in earnest dialogue, which is ongoing with the town to find a way to resolve that. We are committed to that, as Mr. Flynn mentioned. We're not going anywhere. We've been in the town nearly nearly 60 years we want to be a good community partner we want to continue to support you know the, the growth and development of reading and we are committed to working towards that end. i'd like to just understand like where are we going from here it, it, well, we, don't, we can't close we don't have a dep number number one um, we are continuing is that what it's not the only item i mean there's also trees mm -hmm. Um, no, that's, uh, that, that's what I want to go over. Is I want to make sure I've got we've got a list of like what what what's I, outstanding. I mean, we've talked about a lot. If I may, before we move on, do we want to discuss the waiving of the bylaw fees uh, at this meeting? Sure. <laughs> yes. Um, that's, that was an email I sent. Yes. Did you see that? I did, but I didn't. I did. I just gotta find it. About the, about the waving of the fees. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm a retired school teacher, but teaching since 1975. I fought and scraped and scrounged for that entire time to get funding for anything I ever used in my entire career for teaching. So I am fully in favor of, of uh, relaxing the entire funding fee. 
with Austin Prep for this project. Chuck, what did we do, or what did was done for the football field? We waived the entire fee. What do the other members of the commission feel? Um, I'm just going to comment. Um, I'm not opposed to a reduction, but I just want to comment that you know the amount of additional um, work and involvement um, that Chuck um, has has and will continue to undertake. Um, is going to take some time away from other projects and you know just with the demand um, and you know I want to move I want to move ahead with um, this you know this organ with Austin prep in reviewing that fee but I'm not um, totally convinced that a, a full 100% reduction um, is is realistically gonna work which also continue to to I mean the reason for the fees is to um, support conservation oversight and involvement in the project I mean, there's a reason for the fees so I mean, I'm not saying well, again I'm not saying all or nothing just wondering if there's any room for um, some sort of middle ground. If, if I may, I just would like to remind the board we're, we're dealing with a, a nonprofit educational facility. Okay. We're also talking about a situation where we've been talking to the town about the culvert situation, and the school has is trying to earmark money for a substantial contribution or development there to that's going to have major impacts and hopefully for the public good in, in fixing what the town is concerned with so I, I would I would request the board take that into consideration because that's not something that was originally um, something that we had talked about but as good neighbors we're we're making significant contribution in that regard and I and I have I have faith in, um, based on Austin Prep's track record of previous wetlands projects, you know, that um, the projects are, you know, are, are not going to be, you know, an, something that we could anticipate a lot of difficult complications with. I mean, we've worked with Austin Prep before on previous permits, and, and they have been a good neighbor about about every order item. I just bring it up for to yeah. play no, devil's I, advocate and to have the fine, conversation. And if and if other sentiment is a you know we could just take it to a vote and discuss it further or not or it's up to you guys. Any other members have a comment on the fees? I mean, I think that we talked about this when the football field came up and they, you know, they let the, everyone in town, I, correct me if I'm wrong, we let everyone in town use the tennis courts and right. the, they're not blocking off any of these areas right. Um, right. and it's a non-profit and I, I would hope that if there was an opportunity, the money could go towards, you know, somehow towards the culvert in some way. But you know this this is a huge number on this project. I mean, what what we're yeah. giving back is is nothing. It's probably only half of what's needed for the culvert itself. But I mean, that could make a big difference. I think that we have you know Austin's prep. Um, their heart is with the culvert, but I think that the process that it goes through with the town and having all that everyone say yes and getting. You know the town needs to know that it's the right thing to do, and who's going to take responsibility, and you know yeah. all that, and, and work is going to happen, and what's our role, and what's their role. That's that's probably what um, is delaying a a full-throated statement on this culvert. So um, I. You know this is if you if you know if you wanted to. If you wanted to allow the, 
the cost for prep to waive, to waive the fees, I don't think that you would think about it ever again and say, geez, we shouldn't have done that. I mean, it's, no, I think it's, yeah. you know, I do see the benefit of it and I, um, the way things are proposed. It fits the requirements. You know, we've asked for just more information here and there. Out there, I think it's not a small fee. Yeah, it's not a small fee. I think it's a good point. That there is a small fee shop. I think ultimately, what I've heard tonight is, which is, is I think what Dr. is is correct. That there is a public value. Absolutely, and, and it's and the long-term public benefit. Exactly. Yes. I know. And I think that's going to be continued. And, and so I think, consistent with what we've done in the past, I think we, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving her a ride. Her car broke down. She's asking <laughs> if we disagree. Does she walk home? <laughs> that's that's not on the table. That's not on the table. You're getting a ride, I promise. Um, so no D. So wait the for the AECOM. The AECOM report's supposed to come out before our next meeting. So okay. that might that might uh, help out a little bit, but. Again, I think Mike's uh, kind of crafted a way, which we've used before, to kind of put it in the order but not tie it to issuing. So I made a motion to continue. Continue. Do I hear a second? But before that, we should probably take a vote on this. But I made a motion to waive the fee. I'll second it. All those in favor? Motion to, uh, motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Can we just get a list of the things that they need to do at yeah. the next meeting? So that everyone's on the same page. Uh, do you have a file number, the um, tree report? The inventory. <laughs> the landscape plan. Landscape plan, fencing. They're going for fencing, right? One of the things. We'll discuss another fencing along that one area and right. see Address if that, that can be discussed. Discussed. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll we'll so I, I, I think we want to make this one that's not discussed again, right? That, like, I, I think we want concrete points. Like, what, what do we expect? Like, well, what was fencing was we wanted something so things didn't get blown. Right. I mean, you could still use a post and rail fence and put lanes. Uh, uh, livestock fencing behind it, vinyl livestock yeah. fencing will uh, serve the same purpose, but... And I think that's what I heard. Right. Uh, that, that's our expectation is to see that. Well, they have to come up with something that's... that's I mean, questions out there, how to keep the trash out of the well. Yep. Anything else? Um, if they could just address the potential issue of, uh, of runoff from pavement, because I know that little black crumbly stuff it gets everywhere. Mm -hmm. it gets everywhere. It gets inside shoes. People walk. It, it's like it's in my washing machine. My son picks that up from soccer and puts it in the bag purposely. You know what I'm talking about. And then just lastly, it, it sounds like there there's going to be a new report associated with the. Yeah, to address, uh, to address Ryan's comment. Crystal's uh, comments right, right. Just to make sure we get that. And the slide. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. We improved the uh, gray scale on the forest uh, condition plan, too. So we go more legible. New plans. I think there's going to be some tweaking of the drainage. Uh, so we'll see a new set of plans that will come through, too. Anything else? Dr. Hagen. I just wanted to thank the Commission for its consideration and feedback. We'll continue to work with the oh, yeah. town personnel and engineering. Yeah. 
conservation administrator to work out thank you for your consideration with the fee waiver we do expenses in ways that we believe benefits the town june is one example i shut down the campus for two days so uh, reading's emergency management could practice crisis drills on the campus so i mean there's real cost for austin with our maintenance staff and safety staff and so on but there's just one small example of how we are committed to working with the town and the other thing was uh, the wetland seed mix dock. So we'll see what that uh, secret recipe is. You guys have the, the list? Evan, did, it, it, Chuck had the, um, the, the wetland seed mix. Yes, yeah. I was going to email that to him. Yep. I have um, <coughs> one hard copy now. Do you want that or do you want to? This is email? better to email it anyways. Okay. Yeah, so sure. I'll put it right in the file. Sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Becky. 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 Um, we're going to take a um, two-minute recess. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.
It's not look fun. It's just I've seen it. If people are here for that, we're not supposed to talk about it. Yeah, I got it. I got it all out of control. Mm. Alright, so where are we at? Small yeah. way. Yeah. 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 Meeting back in order. Can I have some quiet, please? Thank you. Um, ooh, next on the agenda is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for one of. Um, 18 small lane, map 40 and 41, lot 153, 155, and 29, KCJ Del Rey, Realty LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Erickson from North Environmental. We flagged the wetland. I know Chuck has reviewed it, and the fact that it's been out there, apparently. Uh, there were a couple of minor changes at the entryway. And I haven't gotten on the plan yet. The engineer is changing that, but we agree with the changes. We have no problem with it. So I think we're in agreement on the boundary the way it is now. Yeah, we had a, a meeting with Maureen um, yesterday, and uh, we walked the site and um, we had no, the, the periphery of that wetland uh, appeared. Uh, to be at the base of the slope, and uh, we didn't, other than the, one of the entrance flags, we didn't have any other. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Other than one uh, flag at the entrance that we oh, yeah. moved, okay. uh, we had no um, yeah. differences of opinion on the location of those flags. Do you know which flag it was? Um, it was actually, we... Marine's we did not approve. 2C1 was yeah, added. 2C1. Deleted 3C. It connected. And 2C1 connects to 4C. Yeah. Which is not a huge difference, but yeah. no, it isn't. So it's just about by the beginning. So yeah. The entrance. Um, a, there was a, and there's a, there's a, there's a little bit of a history. Um, towards the um, series of flags, like uh, within uh, just, I guess, maybe south, I don't know, I don't know. between 14B and 20B, there is a depression in back, um, and there was a debris in that, look, it's a depression, there's debris, I guess, in that that location. I've never seen that, but Chuck has seen that a couple of years ago and took photos of it. Um, so a potential vernal pool? Well, there were... I'm not sure, but I, we were going to explain it, and I know Bill Johnson... Yeah, that was the area that was previously disturbed, and uh, Mr. Johnson, the prospective buyer of the property, took some material out of there. There was an old car and stuff. 
Oh, Chuck's got the same pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I thought That's Bonnie and Clyde was out there or something like that. But here's, a, here's, here's what we're looking at. Yikes. So, so the thoughts, so when we went out there, I didn't realize who uh, was working on this project. But um, I've worked, it's Bill, right? Bill is. Yeah. Bill has worked on another project with us that, that came out fine. Find him to be someone that, um, you know, I wouldn't trust. So uh, <laughs> my, my thought was, and you were there, I was just going through, like someone looked like they came out and they filled in this area, and I was wondering what had happened. But here's the pictures. Here's a picture of a car on the screen. But we're looking at it because when we walked out there, when they developed three, three, 336, 364 Child, Child Street, Street. Um, that developer wanted to purchase this land too. And we walked out there and I took the pictures just because, you know, it was an interesting car. And, um, and that's why I had it. So there's no other reason. But we're looking at, we're looking at the, the plants in back of the cars. And that's that's why um, you know that's why I have these pictures today because I want to see what what's going on here. Wait. So now you can see the the area that was supposedly this. It was, that wasn't because of the removal of that. Yeah, it was like an an excavation going on out there at some point in time back in the seventies or so. Can, can You're showing this this picture is probably twenty years old. That and I, and I, don't, I don't believe that, that car. Yes, that car might be older than that, but the picture was just taken last year because it came from I my did. camera. Well, the car was wasn't there <coughs> a year ago. So I have my film. I have my well. And then right here, we just go the to the area that I that the area that. Um, let us finish, and then you can then you can add in. Okay, that's how I I conduct the meeting. If you mind. so that you're telling me that car is still there, sir. Let us finish, and then we'd like you to hear from you, okay? Thank you. And you need to identify yourself okay. uh, when you do. Okay, thank you. Car's not there now. Uh, where's my case? But we're not talking about the car. I know that. Okay. So what are we talking about? This is depression. Yeah, so there was a, de there was a depression out in that area. And it looked like that, someone that had big? gone out there and what filled in. Is that big? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yes. size of a, of a, you know, like a foundation or something. Okay. What? So. Uh, I think somebody mined the property in the past. Is that one for what? For the gravel? For the dirt? Yeah. If, well, I understand. I, there was some neighbors out there. Uh, they had told me that years ago they took a lot of that material out to build the roadways or backfill some foundations. And um, apparently they also used it for a dump because they buried a lot of material there. There were some ties buried there. And of course you see the vehicle that's there. And uh, so we, we removed it. Is that gone? Excuse me? Is that gone? The yes. Car? Yeah. I told someone about that they were interested in buying it. <laughs> Don't know them. It was like uh, paper. It was just so rotten. Yeah. So what what was the reason to go in there prior to getting the uh, order of conditions and permission to do any work and make any disturbance in this area to to, to get the, the truck out? That's that's what was curious. Right. It, there was no particular reason. The owner has been meaning to get it out, and he asked me when I put it if, if I would do that, and it wasn't flagged as a wetland, and I didn't see, and I, you know, the the the, uh, the topo. Supported, even if we made any disturbance there, it did, didn't seem like you know there would be any flow into the wetlands. Uh, so there's no particular reason. But there were there, were, uh, there was gas tanks. Who, who's this gentleman in the white shirt? What's that? Who, who are you? We oh, just I'm want to sorry. know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Bill Johnson. I'm a developer. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. So I'm all sorts of confused here. The we're talking about an excavation, or we're talking about a truck being because I, I'm hearing two different things, and they're two different areas? No, there's one area. One area. So, <laughs> this is the area right here. I guess it's, it's uh, right in this area here. 
and there's a, I guess there's a road that comes in like this, and some along in that direction, and goes back out onto Small Lane. And it looks like, you know, the pictures that I had when we went out there originally a year or so ago before 364, whatever it was, 366 Charles, Charles, Charles Street, Street was built. Yeah. There was a truck, and there was an area, and I, and I said that looks like it's you know a, a wetland that would be uh, jurisdictional under the uh, Reading bylaw because there was, in my opinion, sensitive fern and maybe you know maybe so some groundwater. Ferns there, but the there's some pictures fern. I took, and again I wasn't taking pictures of the resource area. I was taking pictures of the truck, and they don't show anything except maybe sediment fern. And we looked at the pictures out on the site. That's all. That's all we have. So, it didn't you and Maureen and and Steve? Didn't you see some skunk cabbage? In, in area? I'm sorry. What was that again? Didn't you see some skunk cabbage in an area? I saw some wetland plants. I didn't see skunk cabbage in that area. That's, there was some cinnamon fern out there, which I believe is facultative. Yeah. You said you saw skunk. And I thought Maureen said, Maureen said that, yeah. And I thought I did too. But I'm only going by, you know, whenever I, whenever I was out there. But just from the, I mean, the, the grade on this site just changes quite a bit. I see it goes all the way up. It's like a 14 foot slope at the peak. The wetland line wraps around this 80 to. 82 contour. Are you thinking the, the, the wetland that sometimes came in? I mean, it no, I think I think they excavated a long time ago, and the groundwater created a jurisdictional well. Its own little, yeah. its own little isolated that, that, pocket. It, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Exactly. Thank you. I, I, that's that's what I'm not I wasn't understanding. Chuck, can okay. I ask you? Is it vegetated or is it just open now? It's vegetated. No, it. It's just yeah. It looked like fresh. I mean, the gravel, fresh undisturbed, gravelly sand was on. Oh, there are a few upland ferns. Yeah. A few some trees cut. Ferns. There are some trees, some mature trees, actually still in the area on the on the periphery at the base of the slope. And it looks like I, I don't know, Mr. Johnson. We could see some sand around at the base of some of those trees. Did you disturb the sand that significantly that it might have? Well, uh, of course, we moved the truck out, we moved the tanks out, and there were a bunch of tires that were buried in one area uh -huh. that was away from the truck. Uh -huh. The opposite side of the depression area went up a slope. I, I don't know. I would guess it would be... Uh, going towards the, the, the road, the, the little path? Going towards what he just drew. There was a little uh, area where all the tires were buried. It's the side of well, what part of what he drew are you talking about? <laughs> this side or... So it would be if... Um, okay, this is, this is the path going up to Chow Street. Right. Right yep. here, right? Yep. So if this is the depressed area here, yep. right, it kind of gradually goes up this way here. Yeah. So it would be right in this area here. Oh. And, and I don't, who did the site block? I did. So, so, so when you walked in, did you see all the tires there? On yes, the, on the we did when we walked out, yeah. Right, so that... It, along with, it was like a 30 yard dumpster we filled with uh, you know, all the metals that were there. So, I mean, the contour plan shows it pretty well, right? I mean, look, I, I look at this 80 contour that generally has just gone around and then also it dips in right here. That's that's what we're talking about. The, uh, Most of the wetland area. boundary is following those contours. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it follows the topography because it's, it's all sand and gravel. Sandy gravel is a very permeable soil. The water goes through it quickly. It's not like there's a lot of trapped water or anything yep. there. So. Yeah, so we did some augering down there, and it was, I mean, there was, it was wet within, I don't know, 12 to 18 inches of that surface of, the, of what was excavated. Um, what were the soils? But it was sandy. It was sandy. It was sandy. Gravel. Sandy, right? And it was an excavated area. I mean, according to my scale, like 40 by 40 yeah. feet. So 
it's just like I said. Uh, the only reason why I'm talking about this is because it it had the look of you know just someone <laughs> someone dumping sand on it to bury put a few more feet on top of what could have been a wetland. So today, one day. But you dug it. I mean, we used an auger. I mean, there was sand piled up against the uh, trunks of the tree. You know, maybe 12 inches. They were they were about a foot or so up the up the slope. So it didn't just look excavated. There was a little bit of backfill. Yeah. Okay. And like, how thick? What did you estimate? I, I think it was about foot. A foot around the tree, and that was about a foot high from the base. So maybe this. It's hard to tell. Oh wait a minute! And then I dug down, and I found um, I found uh, hay, yeah, pine needle and leaf litter about a foot down. So it's about two foot of something on top of whatever the whatever the layer of uh, like duff was there. Okay, but you're also talking. Um, wait, I'm just looking at the historic. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Right. However, part of that depression does go up, and I would say, yeah, that part going towards the this part of the round circle is, would not would never be well. Enough. It's it's quite a bit higher. Okay, so maybe we need. Is it? It sounds like there's still a question about whether or not there's wetland soils under that. Or you think if if any wetland soils could have been removed and it could have been functioning as a wetland before some fill was placed? Um, I mean, I think we could all look. Or you guys could look yourselves and see. But, you know, it would be interesting to go back out there and, and see. I know that Maureen offered to come out there with a small backhoe, backhoe and, to and open do up some a digging. Pit. I'd like to see it. Now, if you look at that photo, the vegetation is pretty sparse, except yeah. for the cinnamon fern in the background. I mean, I didn't do this to kind of create a, a problem. I just wanted to discuss it here at the meeting and then talk mm -hmm. about the plants and the vegetation from the pictures and from the person that actually did the work and, and then to kind of evaluate it. T to me, I feel like the, the car was removed. I mean, I get that. I mean, the leaf litter on this picture looks pretty much the same. I'll zoom in. And can I ask the applicant, um, so you said you took out tanks and tires in this car. Yes. So what kind of tanks? It was some oil tanks. Like a typical homeowner? Yeah. A two, no, 500? There were barrels. Thousand. Empty barrels. Um, and you put the fill back in the excavation for that, or...? Can you, can you speak to the fill that we're describing? Well, um, I, I don't, so there were some tops buried, uh, I'm going to say, and we took those out. There were uh, uh, cans, um, you know, paint cans there. Um, so we, we just, you know, as we went there to move the truck, we saw the other materials, so we just removed them. Removed I, them. I didn't yeah. think it was a wetland at all because, you know, I don't know all the species of wetlands, but from what I saw and I've been in the business for a while and I'm not an expert in the vegetation but I, I did not think that uh, you know uh, it was an overabundance of any wetland material it wasn't flag so I and I, it was clearly outer wetland flag so um, I am it didn't appear to be a wetland to me <laughs> well yeah I, don't, I mean I don't think people who did the site visit are calling it a wetland right now functioning it's not functioning as a wetland right now um, but as as you can see on the topo though that little um, contour what well are we or aren't we because I mean, if we aren't then I, I, do you think it, it bears sending a backhoe out there and opening up a pit to see in the lower part of that no no, uh, no I said well um, Sounds like whatever was out there is gone. And there's a lot of disturbance in one area. I mean, everything was kind of mixed. I think we all agreed on that. I think the soils were mixed. There was no, wasn't layered at all. And then there was that, uh, the, 
fact that there was the stuff layer underneath, like about a foot of whatever that material was, even if it was just moved around. Yeah. Uh, but what didn't, but what looked odd was, you know, there, there wasn't really any tracks coming in or coming out, and there wasn't any area for to, to get the fill and. So maybe maybe they knew there was some tanks underneath there, and they had to get rid of those. And you know what? And you said tanks, tanks. Yeah. So they got rid of the tanks, and they got rid of the car, and they got rid of all that stuff, and that's just what disturbed the, See, the area. If they were half buried right here, something else. Mr. Johnson, were the the tanks buried? Were they on the surface or? Well, uh, there was some exposure or some tops. Oh yeah. Right, and they were just barely coming out of the ground so we just went over we thought we could just pull them out and they were they ended up being um, I don't know 60 70 uh, paint cans yeah. on top of the tarp uh, the in the tarp in the tarp yeah, yeah. Um, did you search for anything else in there or do you think no, I didn't want clear? to disturb anything the only thing I took was what was visible okay you no know, we can go in there and excavate or maybe they did they had a little excavator you know maybe they disturbed some material but it was just to take what was what you saw the pictures. All right, it's, took out. it's probably not a wetland, but maybe maybe it needs well, to be looked into. But it's submit. also an activity that um, needs to be permitted next time. Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, know, I'm just going to say that that if there's any excavation within that hundred feet, got to go through a permitting process yeah. for that. So spread the word. I didn't really qualify. Whatever. I guess to go out there is one thing, but you know, when we went out there, we. Um, we didn't excavate. We just removed some material, and you know, I, I just it, thought. I, and removing hazardous material is like it's an improvement of the of, yeah. of the property. I mean, there's a whole nother set of regulations that have to do with waste disposal and stuff like that. But um, I'll leave it up to you know whoever's doing the work to have the onus to follow those rules. But um, I, at this point, to me, it looks like an upland situation um, and it's probably a benefit to the wetland if if this these rusting potentially leaking hazards are taken out um, but again if if any more excavation is proposed or if, if that's going to happen we got to have a permit first yeah I mean, and, and that's, that's, that's the part that was yeah. on that, that you uh, the application was at the office and then when we went out there it was work that was done so it was different from what I remembered and so that so I said why did they put the application in and then go out and do some work it's usually you know there's a hold on it at that point I wouldn't expect anyone to do any any work until <coughs> until you're approved I mean that that's so that's what started this whole thing yeah. I mean you could have done it or someone could have done it prior to the application or in, you know so long ago that we wouldn't have known, but, no way to know. but anyways, I'm, I'm glad we're talking we, about I'm the glad application we talked about. For, for Child Street. No, for this, so, so this, this here, this 18 small, small lane. But uh, yeah, I appreciate going through it. I, I think we, I mean, we're ready to move on. At one point, you could, you could clearly see that it was ex excavated out for gravel, and they used it for either building ro a roadway or they using it for putting a foundation. I do agree with you. You know. Probably should have notified the department, but there was no devious or any intent yet just to remove it because the uh, owner had asked us to do it. Yeah, and sometimes and sometimes Chuck gets emergency calls like uh, there's an emergency thing going on. I'm not saying that could. Usually, it's a town department that says, yeah, "Okay, look, we got a, a down tree somewhere, and we we really want to act on this fast, and you know, just give the office a call." So these, are you done, Mike? Did you want to say anything else? I was just going to say this picture is from uh, May 30th, 2018. And so is the other one. Yeah, yeah. So um, about the ANRAD line. So just those ones of the... No, is that what this is about? <laughs> trying to, I think so. Um, any other issues with this ANRAD? Yeah, so I, I mean, I realize that this site is circling in on itself. Um, so there's going to be no 100 foot lines. But uh, I'd like to see the 35 foot line that's from our, our bylaws as well. Uh, offset. 25, 35. There's 25, 35, 100 that we 
we require on, on the internet. The, the 100 is not going to exist here. I don't believe. I, I can, um, maybe I'm wrong. So when the application comes in for whatever work's going to be proposed out there, they'll have those jurisdictional setbacks on don't we, that plan. Don't we usually request a jurisdictional Actually, setback that. on the NRAP scheme? Yeah. We don't? No. No. Why? No, it's just a flag. Just the line. It's Flagging. just to measure. Yeah. Actually, you're right. Identifying the resource area. And to, I, mean, I, mean, I would say that I can understand this without those jurisdictions. That's, that's fine. I thought that was uh, typically required, something we required. With it even actually with might be on it's the helpful. application, but I don't think that I would hold this up because we need the 35. It's helpful, but I don't think we've required it. We just need the wetland flags. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, the that's whole purpose of the whole process is the line. That's what this is about, is, um, is the resource Keep it as area. black and white as you possibly can yeah. without the lines. I mean, the line is the line. What's the line, the line is the, the line. The, the, what's <laughs> the line? The 35 is not going to change with any sort of application. So I, I'm fine with that. I thought we typically did require it, so I, I have no issue with that. All right. Are there any comments from the community? And um, raise your hand in your name and yeah, ma'am. Um, Susan Bow, 15 Brewer Lane. So just goofing around on the town website, you know, and you can show all the different wetlands and things like that. So this is a hill, right? Yes. Yes. And so are you going to just like take the whole top of the hill off to build the houses? I haven't been back there. I have no idea. That's not what this is. Oh, what forward. is this all about? I'm it's sorry. Am I overstepping my bounds? I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I think it's, it's worth understanding. To, it's so just to um, say yes or no about the wetland line where they put the flags, whether it's upland. And yes, you're, you're saying that there is a, a hill. We don't know what the developer is going to do at this point. OK. Yeah. But if you do look at the hill, there's wetlands Correct. green all around the hill, right? right. The, that's yes. what this Good. plan shows. Yes. It, yes. Okay. Right. Yep. So what happens? Uh, you give it to our engineer. Sir, your name? Is that green? Big one. That picture right there. Sir, sir your name? Can I have your Dennis name? Dennis Symes. Thank you. I live in 30 Brewer Lane. Yep. The picture there is not really a true picture, where the wetlands are. If you, if the information that I got from the town shows it, I have another picture somewhere at home. Move that the green area where you put, everybody's putting it way away from this hole. But put, put the, move the slide down a little bit, please. Like just towards. To his brewer? Or yeah, they want to see, I want to see, uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Does that help? Just show no, I want to find my house. Oh, With, hold on a second. My house is right on. I can see that. I'm almost, is this brewer lane or is this? On that no. I don't know what brewer lane is. Okay. It's right yeah. there. It's, it's the back of the back. It's the closest cool. cul de sac over to your left. Okay, <laughs> sorry, guys. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. So come back out a little bit. <laughs> No, you got to go back in, I think. I'm trying here. Yeah. Okay, here we go. The green is behind my house. Yeah. So okay. I don't know why it's up in the... Uh, Let me get rid of this. Uh, it can choose the overlay. Yeah. Yeah. That's and supposed to be the wetlands. And you can, but you can jump in and help. The bread thing. I think Dennis lives here. Yeah. And he was talking yeah. about this area here. It's all wet. <laughs> that was a great circle, though. <laughs> Did that help at all? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. No, thank you. It's hard to see the green. So. Yeah, can you make the green greener, Chuck? Uh, I think this. <laughs> right here. There's the same. That's dark green. Here's a light green right here. Here's my house right here. Uh huh. Yeah. The, the, the stuff he's talking about is approximately, I'd say, right about in there. It's almost, it's, some of it's on my property, and some of it's on whoever owns all this property. And that property was usually is a dumping area before I got there. Fifty years ago. <laughs> well, it's with, just fifty years ago. Mm. And small lane was a little small down and there used to be a, a a guy that kept it all the rubbish. He was a rubbish collector. I won't say anybody, but the, a lot of it stayed there. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious to see what I'm curious to see what's going to happen here, and I think this should be this 
them. I, this is um, my neighbor to the right of me, and this one here, actually, this is my house right here. Yeah. And that's supposed the end of Small Lane, which it is. So, so that red mark is the end of Small Lane. So this is where the project is, right? Yeah. Here. So the the right. There's nothing parcel, that's going to happen here. The parcel that we're pointing out is not actually part of this application. It seems to be. The only reason why <laughs> no. all these abutters from Small and Brewer and oh, Beaver no, Road. Are, picture, this is Brewer Lane right here. Right. And that. That is right here. <laughs> Somebody can go get there. Get, something's wrong here, I'm telling you right now. If you think you're way over here. Anybody? This, this project is off the end of Small Lane. Right. So Does where is Small Lane small on that? Small Lane is Dana right there. Comes Dana Road small comes Lane in is and then right you here. take a right on Small. We walked in here into this area. We were not over here. This is where the project is happening. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. That. So I guess okay. the I guess the parcel is part of it because there, it crosses this it crosses the edge of that that's that, that part. We're through the line now. Right here. Here's your house. Yeah. No, it's not. See the connection. The next one above. Oh, no, it's this one here. No. no. Is it this no. one? No. This one above. The one, the one, one above it. Is this brewer? No. No. Yeah. This is no. right there. Yeah. Okay. It's off the stick right now. No. So is that no, one down, Chuck. Wrong one down location. is his house. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that doesn't have the right location. No, so, so this is Brewer. That's his house. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That mush is right around in here. <coughs> it doesn't. It doesn't show right, I don't think. So, sir, what you're saying is... Out my back, I can move right out my back window, and I can see that, say, see this area. Mm -hmm. and my house is... That, that is... I don't know where that is. That's my case. Any okay. other comments? But I don't even get a walk out and you can see it, so... And I have a couple of stone walls up there. There it is. So, so um, there's some confusion among people who live on Brewer Lane. I was going to address that. Can I? Can I? Go right ahead. So here's here's the project right here. It does include that parcel truck because okay. it because it crosses right here. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. So here's the, here's the project where it's going to happen. But it cuts through here. It cuts through this parcel here. Right. It goes all the way over to Brewer Lane. And because it cuts through there, the town has a regulation that makes everybody within 300 feet of, the of these lines be notified. But it doesn't mean this area or any of this is getting right. worked on. Right. But it, it's kind of confusing, but that's why people on Brewer and over here have been notified. Can except, except for the fact that people who live at the, not to confuse it, <laughs> people who live at the end of Colonial received a letter in the mail asking to purchase an easement for access to the northwest corner of that lot. If I can explain that. Um, because, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on oh, one hold on one second. So that's why people here are very concerned about this potential development because it's not just the small lane side of it it's the other corner of that lot do you follow what i'm saying well, okay but we're here talking around. about the wetland boundary on our Cor parcel and nothing else correct and in that parcel there there is a somebody who is trying to buy an easement into that parcel so we're being we just want to speak clear i have clear. no knowledge of that my i'm not speaking to you i'm speaking to the board if we could stay on the wetland boundary i'd like to go home sometime tonight <laughs> so so i actually that's that's our sensitivity i just it, want the commission to know in a sense i actually don't disagree with that right it is that there is no project actually being proposed at this time you, yes because we're just about saying project the project the project the, the purpose of this is is to review a line, right? 
and, and I think that's, that's what's important to, to recognize is nothing being proposed besides a, a question to the commission of do we agree with the wetland line? Okay. And, and I think it's okay to help people understand and, well, but so, why they were notified. But so yeah, I, I yeah, think I what's, what's, what's yeah. interesting, interesting is an important piece to this is going to be anything, I mean, if there are wetlands area boundaries that are are, are looking to be <laughs> understood beyond this area, it would require something separate. They well. would need to refile. Right. Correct. They would need to refile and propose another map with another delineation for the area I think the rest of the group right. is concerned about because of correspondence we weren't aware of. We, we are. So the, 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 you folks got a, what, you knew of a easement that was coming in from some, another Proposed. area? People on Colonial. Where, uh, I, won't, I won't take it much time. Actually, the colonial drive but the proposed in. easement purchase <laughs> was mailed to the um, the owner of this house, and they proposed purchasing an easement for a driveway that would access this lot from this direction. Obviously, to get to this dry land here that's not in the wetland. That's why people on rural land are very concerned. People on colonial are also very concerned. So okay. I don't I know this isn't that area. This does pertain to yeah. the yeah. issue tonight. Yeah, okay. Right. So but I just want to explain right. the sensitivity okay. of the abutters. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I think what's it. important to understand is so because this I think this ex ex will help explain that. Is, and we, we like to pre premise that this is never an exact line, and, and that's why somebody goes out and actually does the line. But this is an approximate line of where the wetlands are, are likely to occur. So the applicant has come in and somewhat mapped out this line. The commission at this point is not agreeing to anything that they've mapped out in any of these areas. And they haven't mapped it. And they haven't it. mapped it. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing proposed. So, for us. And, yeah. and so, I understand. So the, the only thing at this, at this time that's in front of us is a line that's that's right here in this area. Uh, so so it, anything that would map out a line in this area would have to come before us again completely That's separate question. so uh, I, I get what you're saying so far so they're going to um, do a, a, a plot plan or a project plan at that point do we get notified again yeah, yeah. so yeah. if if there were a project yeah. being proposed Understood. in these areas yeah. okay yeah be another application and you folks that got notification get a notification i don't know what the protocol was yeah okay, okay. Okay. Is there any other questions? Yes. Okay. okay. Hearing none. Do I hear a motion to I make a motion to close? A second. Those in favor? We can. Can we issue? Yes, you did you draft an order? Or I didn't draft an order, but you can certainly issue it, and I have 21 days to bring it back to the commission. All right. Unless we don't have a quorum at the 28th. Let's not think about that. I'm, I'm I'm gonna gonna have a is everyone going to be here? Who's here now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I make a motion problem. to issue uh, an order of resource area delineation. Yeah. ORAD. ORAD with the amended line to C1 and elimination of 3 as indicated. You just get that new plan that to me. Yeah. All those in favor? Yeah. Dave, you have a favor? I didn't. I didn't raise my hand. Okay. Didn't see. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Hi. No, no, I'm gonna leave them. Oh, the next one. Yeah, yeah, there. Small lane. I'm just listening here. I'm just. No, I'm just. I'm not interested. The next item on the yeah. agenda is an abbreviated Some of the flags. notice of resource area delineation for 270-0722, 259, and 267 Main Street map. Well, I'm sorry, I have the wrong. Map 12, Lord. Yeah, oh, you got it. 
Back 12, lot 39 and 40. Do it again. I'm sorry. Kristen. Hi. Hi. Um, good evening. My name is Kristen Barr. Um, I work for um, Hancock Associates who are representing um, Stogie Construction. And we're here to um, get an ORAD for um, properties you mentioned 259 and 267 Main Street. Otherwise known as Smith Oil. Yes. And uh, we went on a site visit on Tuesday where um, Chuck and Rebecca were present with myself and Dave um, from our other office. And one flag was moved about 30 feet outwards, right? Flag eight, about right? 20 feet up and about 25. 25 feet over. Yeah, it was kind of shifted. Yeah. So. Do we know which flag? It was so 28, 130. 130. I have the revised plans for you. Thank you. Thank you. We also looked a little bit at the bank. Um, there's a, uh, is that a sewer easement back there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah sewer easement um, goes out to Cross Street. I don't have a whole lot of other information since I wasn't the one that delineated it. So, um, delineation. And we had uh, looked at the other areas previously. Um, and I know Chuck had looked at them, and uh, I guess in the location of the house, the previous house that has been demolished, um, there were some questions Chuck had had, and that there were, uh, Dave had gone out, Dave Cowell from your other office, and he uh, had gone out and uh, re-delineated. And okay. Chuck was in agreement with that new line. Um, there was some trash behind uh, the doggy. Yeah. 271 Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Chuck, did you send um, that information to the health agent? Uh, so I had a conversation with uh, Julie, and I, I just think it's it's in the process of being discussed. And Julie Mercier is in uh, a planner with the town. So yeah, there's a lot of trash out there, and what was the thought that how to get there? Uh, we had some conspiracy theories that it was a homeless person, but then Chuck thought it might be trash ripped apart by some raccoon. Some animal or something like that, because the bag was dragged out into the back and then ripped through. Oh, wait a minute. So, um, it, so I don't know. Are you, are you finished with your presentation? Or is I don't really. Pretty much. Not much else to present. Yeah, I, I don't. You guys moved flag. It's the area in the, the by the house. You're you're happy with Chuck? Yeah. I thought it was pretty consistent throughout. Um, in this in this area here, the flags um, run generally at the base of the fill. There's a peninsula here, and then a fill, and then. But this is where we started looking more closely. So it's all fill, fill, fill. And you, you know, the fill has been there a while, so it's historic and it is what it is. Um, and again, this is just to improve the, the flags. And as we moved up into this, this other area, as, it, as the wetland came off the edge of the fill, it moved out and it became flat in this area and the flags moved out and into the flat area and away from the houses and away from the street. And I, I think that we were pretty happy with the soils and we did some augers throughout and the soils looked, it looked like a conservative line, meaning that it was further up the slope than, than one might expect. Um, 
so that's why we were generally happy with the line and when you look at 130 plus flags you kind of get an understanding of you know the terrain and what everyone's looking at and it just makes sense after a while so that's kind of where we were at and that's all I had to, to add Let's have any questions from the Commission yeah. no I just want to comment that I think there was some an environmental report that was I asked the applicant for in a previous meeting and I don't know if I emailed you about this check but I did look at that and their environmental results and and, like and it didn't seem to be a lot of excuse me a 21 e report yeah and I didn't see I, th I thought it was a fairly diligent effort and I didn't see anything that looked mm -hmm. um, particular I, I didn't they have several monitoring wells on the hill area so I saw so two or three at least yep. there might be more um, and so that, they know where groundwater is they do and and I'm not sure what else they might be monitoring for, but they went in when there was an assessment done. But the assessment showed really little to no concern environmentally from a and pollution standpoint. Do you, does anyone know between the two of you what the wells are for at this point? I think they're just left over from the project. I mean, not aware. Okay. Yeah, because they're cemented in and everything. Oh yeah. 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 No, those are expensive holes in the ground, but um, you know, in the if this ever gets to any sort of development plan, you know, whoever's doing that design work needs to know that there are wells out there that they can take real information from in terms of depth to groundwater. And boring logs, too. Sure, but... I think they, I think they used a geoprobe out there, which is great because you get a lot of continuous soil information. So that's something to put on for the, if there's a project proposed later. Okay. Yeah, there's some, there's some good, some surface conditions information in that report they could use. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from, yes? Yes, my name is Ellen Devesis. I live at 237 Main Street. It's so very interesting tonight. Um, I'm not visually sure where we I, I just am very curious, I always have been about that parcel, that four acres, right, that was for sale as a four acre. Right. Has it been sold? I'm not aware of that. Usually what happens is um, after the permitting is all finished and in hand, then the properties will change hand. Okay. Um, is there a way just to get a visual as to where Main Street is and where the uh, wetland boundaries are? Main Street, yes. okay. and here's the wetland. So where, in terms of Main Street, can you, Doggy Daycare, just if I can have a point of reference someplace. It's up there. That's way up there. Oh, Belmont Arms might be, do you know where that would be? Oh, it's uh, the corner of Belmont Arms is on this uh, south It's just to the south. It's just to the south, okay. Right there. Yeah. Because right now I know the house, that's it. Okay, now I'm visual. The house was torn down that. Right. And I have looked over the fence and I'm just wondering, I thought I saw like a vernal pool at least in the spring there. I mean, I'm wondering where the, the house was built. Where do the wetland boundaries start from the Belmont Arms point of view as you look over, as you look north? I'll show you the plan on the I'm just curious. I know there's a... Okay. Chuck, I have it highlighted. Can I just show the... I'll show you the side of the... I've highlighted. I'm just curious. I bought the Belmont Arms. It's all over. Where are the... I know. I know. I'd show her this one, though. It's too confusing. It is really confusing. So... It does follow along. Okay. And should somebody buy this, you know, change hands? Okay. Good. Structures be able to be built on the wetlands if they then I think you mentioned by setting up something else or how is how is that going to work with this? It looks like a funny piece of land with wetlands. They they have been looking at placement of buildings, but they would they. I think in this particular case, they probably would stay away from the wetlands, outside of the wetlands. 
Is there a way to get a copy of a map like this on the website, the town website? You can contact me and I can send you a copy, PDF, and you could, or you can come into the town hall and you could have a copy of it uh, printed up with the uh, engineering department. <laughs> Yeah. I can ask for this. Is this a I can, I can give you this copy off the board. Yeah. Right. I'm just curious. I'm not going to object to anything. I've often wondered what that piece of land looks like and where. I know we have some land we own behind our condo. And just was wondering how this fits into it. Mm. Well, what could potentially be built? There's been some very large structures built in town recently, of course, on the train station on Main. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've been wondering when it sells, what is possibly buildable there? Is it a, a big structure like what we see on Main or across from the train station? Or yeah, I, I, I typically, really yeah, so that's, you know, Conservation Commission doesn't, that's like plan, a planning question. And um, I mean, but Belmont Arms is right there. I oh, mean, I know. you know, it could, it could be pretty to similar to that. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, you know. I'm fine with all that. I just was curious. I think on one side you have Belmont Arms, and on the other side you have Doggy Dare Care. So, I, what's I mean, there's the range right there. Everything's possible. Yeah. And the Bowley Coley is right next yeah. to the Doggy Dare Care. <laughs> Sorry. So, so, yeah. So this is in front of planning right now. Yeah. So, so there's nothing. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the commission, uh, community? Make a motion to close. Okay. Same thing. I'll make a motion to issue. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, there's, there's no Okay. Thank you. Did you read my notes? No. We'll, we'll forgive you. What? Just read with the note on that last application. <laughs> They didn't have the green cars. Green cards. I guess I'll have to fire me. of a notice of intent 270-0717-107 Main Street map 8 lots 1 Palmer. Yeah. So we all set. It's a continuation of a hearing on the notice of amortize. Jeffrey Brim representing uh, 107 Main Street Reading LLC, Michael Palmer. And I'm the engineer. Since we've last met, we've had uh, a meeting with the department staff, I believe, and the engineering department had some comments uh, on some of the features, some issues not related to conservation, related to handicap parking. They also asked us to, uh, we had previously, if you remember, drain this into a valley in the, in the proposed parking area and drain into an existing catch basin and storm sector system. They wanted us to separate that and not go into the system as new pavement, because that system ties into the town's drainage. So 
So we proposed a, a three-chamber Caltech system. So basically it goes into this catch basin, goes into the Caltech chambers, and is uh, recharged into the ground. Up on the right corner of this plan, it's a detail for that, which is right here. Also, we wrote a letter at the request of your agent to kind of respond a little bit to the history of the trees on the property that was submitted on July 23rd to you, uh, indicating uh, that yes, some plantings were planted, they were damaged, they were removed. Uh, the bottom line is we're proposing a slew of trees and bushes throughout the property, uh, ultimately leaving a net positive of two over and above your uh, policy. And I believe that is incorporated into the order of conditions as well as the plan. That's it for changes. I, I know that you've got a draft order of conditions. I also know that there's neighbors and abutters present. Uh, and Chuck may have something as well. Can I just clarify? The, so the, say again with the, the tree replacement, the, the Net replacement above two uh, or greater than two accounts for what was taken down. Correct. So we're taken down previously plus what we're proposing to take down. Yep. The net result using your policy is we're still plus two. So we're not just meeting the policy, we're doing two more than the policy. Just so it's quick. Could you walk through how many were removed? Okay, let's go through I, the letter. I apologize. Yep. Now remember, some of this was I done. I know we've talked about this uh, over, but I figured it's. I think I used the word, I used the word anecdotal. Some of this is done from just, because I wasn't here when yeah. all that happened. I came along late. So some of this is just from information I obtained. So there was supposed to be five small trees planted at the edge of the parking lot. We saw those in the plan. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. They uh, took down, uh, those were damaged over the winter, and that apparently one still remains. Uh, they were taken down, obviously, for, uh, during that winter. Also, a tree leader was cut, which is allowed, it doesn't count, uh, but one tree was taken down in addition to what was previously approved. Uh, and we're proposing the removal of four trees. And so we're proposing to plant eight evergreen arborvitae trees on a buffer against the neighbor, I believe it's present, and three red maple <coughs> trees near the existing 30 inch red maple. So I'm sorry, Mr. Madam Chairman, 30 inch silver maple, as she told me. Uh, that's a large tree that we're proposing not to be altered. So if you add the eight plus eight bushes, that's four plus the three trees, that's seven. That's previously they needed to do five, and that gives you the plus two. So it accounts for what was done in the past and what we're proposing. Two, one. Where, where are the this is four trees to remove. But that they're in the kit. Uh, okay. One is shown. One. Two, three. Okay. Oh, two, tree, four, tree, one, tree. tree. See right Sorry, where are the four coming down from? One, two, three, four. So that doesn't mean anything to me. Could you describe it like in relation to the restaurant? Is it behind the restaurant on the? F it's in the new proposed area. I'm, I'm sorry to go back to that. I think she has to state her name for the record. What? You need to state your name. For oh, the Patricia Debabne, 113 Hopkins Street. Okay, so here's the restaurant here on this map. This is the current dump dumpster location. I believe this is your rear property line. And in the woods behind the property, there are one, two, three, four trees being taken down, all approximately eight inches. We're proposing to plant uh, eight arborvitaes. Five, six, eight, eight new arborvitaes right along the property line. Arborvitaes are an evergreen tree that grows up uh, different than a regular tree, which will have a trunk. Ten or fifteen years, these arborvitaes will grow and create a, a screen. Ten or fifteen level. years? Uh, I just said, if you planted a tree here, in ten or fifteen years, all you would see is the trunk, first level. These are meant to create screening. Just 
large bushes, basically, arborvitae trees. And then in addition, we're proposing is the 30-inch silver maple. And we're, we're adding two red maples here and one red maple here. Now the red maple, as the board knows, is not the maple tree that's Japanese maple that has a red color leaf. These are green leaf trees. They're called red maple because in the fall they turn red first. So these are the three red trees proposed. We had bounced around lots of locations for those trees between my office and, and Chuck's office. At one point we had some over here and we thought this would be the best location because it again provides a buffer. So you'll have a multi-story buffer of the lar large high story red maples and a low story arborvitae. And Jeff, originally you had three parking spaces on that side. Correct. We had one, two, three spaces here. We got rid of the two spaces. To There's only one now. One spot here. It's a parallel parking spot. Question about the pavement. Um, is that going to have as asphalt curbing on it? No curbing because it's all directed inward. Inward. So, so that's going to, that may not be the, the result. Actually, in the order of conditions, it's asked for curbing. Oh, it does? Okay. So we're, we're going to go with right. whatever the planning board asked for, but they know that we've said the plan, the curbing. Typically, the engineer, will, I'm not sure where that's going to end up going, but whatever the planning board say, we could modify or they could they could go with what we say. Okay. I understand that everything flows. It's not needed for drainage, basically, because it's going. Yeah. Right. I'm just thinking, you know, um, you know, pavement runoff, it, it'd be good if it went to an infiltration or it, it sort of pre-treatment. I know, but I don't see. No, I, I guess I'm just wondering it where. It adds a level of protection. It's a level of protection. And yeah. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. to Suspenders for your belt. Oh, he wrote the bushes. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. They are That's a fine. And we're, we're amenable to that as well. Really they are a large bush, unless you Planning has po kept postponing so until you complete. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're still, We're this waiting is for bound Until you're done, other. we won't be allowed back to planning. <laughs> yeah, and I asked Andrew McNichol about the vertical granite curbing, and he didn't know how they would end up. So it's, it's up in the air. For curbing. I just think it would be protective. It, and that's true. And I've that. always seen Ryan ask for it. Yeah. So. Even at Perfectos, where they just did this small 20-foot area. You know, and they have an infiltration system, you know, so it can go in there and the nasty stuff from the road runoff can, can just stop right there and not move downstream. All right. So how many parking spaces are proposed? Seven. And where are they located? Okay, again, this is the edge of the parking facility now, right here. This is the dumpster. One, two, three, four, five, six, 90 degree spaces. You drive so in, pull in here, yard. and one parallel parking on the other side. As you, as Chuck said, we had previously had three parallel parking on that side. So we got rid of two of the spaces. Are those parking spaces going to alleviate any of the on-street parking? That's the intent. It's a sole. That's so is the intent to make that it make it so the employees don't park on the street? That's the intent. Well, how does that get um, enforced? That's not up to this board. We, we have a planning board meeting um, yeah, I coming up in September, so they'll be taking that up. I, isn't it in August? August, August September 9th. It's been Oh, it has? Oh, yeah. It was scheduled for Monday of this week. They postponed it. The 8th. I think it's the 8th. The 8th. And the second week of September. And how is the, like, where the um, bales of hay and all of that, like, how does the, what's being done affect how the water runs off? Where does it run off to? Sure. Everything is, is being directed to this inward this new proposed catch basin and then infiltration system which is on Hopkins Street no oh, this is off where we're working in the behind the, here's again the restaurant here Hopkins Street is off the map okay. and then we're surrounding this with an erosion control uh, filter saw 80 feet of it and can I ask how the intent is like what the intent is 
relative to the parking behind the restaurant that I thought was supposed to be kept clear, but they're consistently always parking back there. Do you know how the new... Oh, back here? Yeah. Directly behind? Mm -hmm. we're, not t we're not doing any work there at all. I know, but how is the work that you're doing proposed to affect the parking that happens there that isn't supposed to be happening? The whole goal of this project is to That's provide nice. additional parking spaces, legal approved parking spaces. That's the and point. is there a goal once the spaces are approved, if the spaces are approved, to change the nature of the business that's there? Oh. Really part of the that's, yeah, this is, we can't discuss that at this meeting. It's not part of well, uh, our jurisdiction. He, no, well, we don't want to discuss it. It's not part of our purview. Okay. So it's brought we up. Can't, even if he answers, we can't hold him to that. Because we well, can only hold part of our conservation issues. Oh, okay. So. I have a question. What size of your varieties and what species are you planting there? You're going to zoom up to the map? Sure thing. You can change the subject. Oh, I get the right side? It doesn't indicate. Are those the evergreens? Yes. So do you know, yeah, do you know what height they're supposed to be? He's a landscape architect. We haven't indicated that. Oh. Can, it, can I ask, um, besides the well, trees and the... Good question. I'm sorry, Carl. Do you yes. want to ask a follow-up, or? Yeah, do you have a size recommendation of those Avervidae? Well, I was just thinking of the screening, right? So if the fence there is five or six feet tall, they should probably plant it at seven to eight feet tall. I mean, in American Avervidae or Emerald Green Avervidae, it would do the trick, but something that's going to stay only eight feet tall might not do what, you know. How do they take if they're if they're eight feet tall, I, I, I had thought that smaller trees have a better chance, chance of survival. surviving. That's what it suggests to me. Just in, so... But then at that point, are they doing anything? Well, well they grow quickly. That's yeah. why I provide well, Certain do species that. do, and some don't. Yeah. And if that's the trick, is to help screen. You could either wait and, 30 years or... And five. like what was there was higher up, and it did provide screening i'd say some sort of american provider emerald green would be a vigorous grower why couldn't it be a mix of trees instead of all one kind of tree i do think the red maples as he pointed out are, are mixed in there those are in the front of the emerald right or the vibra two and one right one two three yeah and back can I ask? Oh, yeah, but they're, I mean, but they're there's, right there's the two of them. maple, arborvitae, fence house, right? Yep, yep. yep. correct. So yep. I think that works. Yeah. 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 Mr. Brown? I trust the tree guy. Mr. Brown? Yes, Ms. Um, did you say Besides the trees, you want to go with what's the ground Something cover look like okay. between the parking spots and, Can you say yeah, you say in, in the, yeah. is it just going to be grass? Is it going to be? An herbaceous cover. What are you? What are you thinking? I'm thinking of an herbaceous cover, just for natural yeah, woods there now. Yeah, yeah, there's woods there now, and yeah. that's what. That, I don't think they want grass there at all. Yeah, you're gonna have. I mean, you should probably. I mean, I'm gonna jump in and suggest something, but Carl, please, or anybody else, just speak up. But there's a snow storage area yeah. right there, and those areas tend to take a lot of damage, a lot of beating. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's um, proposed. I mean, I think the maple will do fine. Otherwise, gravel, I mean, it is going to take a beating. Gra I mean, grass, I guess, but you have to maintain it. And this is the so, rear. It's not part yeah. of it. I was thinking yeah, of just basically bark mulch or native material. No, more herbaceous. Nothing like your thing. Okay. Not bluegrass or anything like that. It's right. not, it's not uh, irrigated back there. So, so whatever. So, so an herbaceous cover. Like a wildflower seed mix or something like that, but not gravel. But not right. gravel. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, and I'm not suggesting it. I'm just making it clear that it's supposed to be natural. It is supposed it's to be not natural. Not supposed to be gravel. I know that's going to be challenging to maintain, but well, it has to. That leads to my next question. So we're using the operation and maintenance plan uh, from the previous application. 
that was uh, written in August 18, 2009 um, by D.G. Comford. Comford, uh, yeah. yeah. So does that include um, some paragraphs, some language about how to maintain the snow storage area in the spring? If it doesn't, could we add that to it? And the f and just you're going to do that through an order, right? Oh, yeah, I'll have it. In, I'll have it in the order, but I and then also to maintain it, maintain that it's natural, and you know, a certain percentage of gravel should not be in that area. So I I don't know if this is re repetitive to what you were just saying because I couldn't really hear you, and I don't know all the terminology. But is there a way to address what seems to be an ongoing issue? relative to um, problems with landscapers and people taking things down that they're not supposed to and not like maintaining things that are damaged that provide a buffer? Because that seems to be what has, according to Mr. Palmer, that's how the problem exists to begin with you know the office is manned by one person which is me I can tell you that um, in my experience projects that come through this department you know while I'm here it's easier to remember what's needed and what's not needed but we always need the help of neighbors to call in because we can't be everywhere but I can tell you that I won't forget anything about this new application and these things should be growing and it it wouldn't take any research to know um, if you said hey that Abravite is dead or two of them are dead and and you know we have all this meeting so I think it would be easier to move forward with uh, replanting so we could make the trees, not the ones that it grew in, but the ones that we've approved to be an ongoing condition, that those things are maintained yeah. as an ongoing condition. And, and, and so then I would always be able to address them within this order. And, and you know, sometimes they do die off. They, some of them, when you get them at a, at a nursery, they just aren't hardy. They die, and it's up to them to to replant them. <coughs> but so right. if it's in a, in a condition, Chuck, as part of the order of conditions, we can make it so that if we do see that one has died off or one has been damaged or that it it's part of our ability to go back and say you need to replace that. Right. So why can't some of them be trees that were the, the type of trees that were there? That because there is lighting and issues back there that that did screen a bit that a that a evergreen that's a foot taller than the fence is not going to accomplish the same thing that was there before. How, how tall do the red maples get? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I think that the arborvitaes space properly in a, a less amount of time will provide 15 plus feet of height, you know, which the red maple is going to take. They'll be pretty yeah, together. Gonna, that's why we 15 chose. years or something like that, or 10, 10 years or so. Yeah. To, to, yeah. So, it, right. yeah, those but bigger trees establish the roots to first. replace a screening that was there that shouldn't have no, been no. taken down. So it's less time for the Abravite. It's the 15 years for if you wanted that uh, oak or maple. So we're going with the one that would fill in quicker. Mm -hmm. So the, these Abravite will do that. And yet there's some, there's a few long-term, more long-term trees that are still being yeah. presented. So is there any kind of like issue with like attracting animals or whatever? To, I know certain pine trees do that. Are those right, they provide habitat like the like whatever was there before. I mean and. Yeah, there's a whole it forest is provided. That habitat. would be birds. Sorry? That would seemingly be birds in, in a tree. It's that, not the same as pine trees, would it? Be? I mean, wouldn't it be different? So we're not taking down pine trees. 
<laughs> no. So my point is on those trees that you're talking about planting pine evergreens, right? Evergreens. They're not pine trees. Well, evergreens. Sorry, it's the wrong word. They, they provide. They do provide shelter. They provide food for bird species, same as the deciduous trees that might have been there before. And, and what they provide also is a screen year round as the deciduous trees also, you know, they lose their leaves and you've got gaps, you know. So when they do grow up and grow up vigorously, um, they're going to be, the, their, their branches are going to kind of interlace, so there will be a fairly robust screen. Can I add a comment? Certainly. Uh, what you may not know is that at the end of all this, the applicant has to request a certificate of compliance from this commission to end it. And at that point, uh, condition 23, proposed condition 23 talks about uh, I or some other person like me as a civil engineer has to go out there, do an as-built survey. They have to pr present those as-built plans to the commission. It gets recorded at the registry of deeds, and the commission has to accept all that which usually means it's a site visit by Chuck, making sure at that point that the trees are alive, that the work is done in accordance with the order. So all that is, by having an order of conditions, you have an official that these things have to be done. It's not like maybe they'll be done. I understand done. that, but it, it hasn't stopped Mr. Palmer from making choices <coughs> to go to do things and take actions that should require the approval of the commission in the past and it's been on more than one occasion so from my vantage point you have to ask why would that be any different in the future this is going to get recorded the registry of deeds and he won't get released until he's done it and to me i'm going to say again that i th i think and as the commission that i spoke to today the state commission said really that if there are existing issues of mitigation and non-compliance, sh the commission shouldn't be moving forward with a notice of intent until that's rectified. So that's what I was told today. And I was told that there's a complaint form to fill out that would have someone who was a representative from um, this county or however they delegate that to look into and I do intend on doing that. You, you are within your rights absolutely yeah. as you know to do that. What um, the engineer's letter that he read and, and Chuck put up um, earlier stipulated was you know that that violation that you were talking about even back in January, I think it was even February further, or further, that, uh, that well, initial that's violation. Right. Yeah. You know that we've been talking about for a while. Dealt with um, lost, missing, damaged, um, unaccounted for trees that needed to be planted during the previous uh, permit, the previous permitting. What his letter outlined was. Um, how many trees he is planting here at our replacement ratio that we recommend for every property that we deal with. So he's meeting, not only meeting the ratio of one for one replacement, but he is also, so he's counted up the trees that were taken previously and the trees that are taken now because of the, because of the pavement and not only is he proposing to replace one for one, but to add two additional trees? I understand. And well, so, well, from our is, standpoint, one second, let me finish, please. Happen? From our standpoint, that's what we've required across the board. And so, from our standpoint, we can say with reasonable, um, with reason, that he has met the standards that we set for those type of violations. Right, but you still have not given any, there's still no end date in sight, in sight. So if this goes on again now, we're at the end of August, you know, the potential exists for it to go on for another 
for another winter. You know, I suspect this is the concern you have is not going to end with this permit. I understand that. And so I can't do anything about no. that. I'm only within mm -hmm. our jurisdictional rights to review, see if the conditions proposed meet our standards, and judge the permit based on that. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the future, and I understand your <coughs> sense of getting burned with the with the history. I hear that loud and clear. And I can't make you, we can't in this permit make you a guarantee um, about future compliance as much as a policeman can't guarantee that no one's ever going to speed again. No, but you but did allow it to be, you did allow it to merge together as one. And we're now at a point where there's compensation above and beyond what we require. So maybe you can. Well, not so. really, from my vantage point, because it. So and from these gentlemen's explained. vantage point, because so, can I, there's can I, also so additional. Sure. There's does, also does the additional park. Could I finish for what I was saying? Yeah. There's also additional parking that is now tied into it. So, so it isn't the same. We could uncouple the violation by. I mean, I think what I'm. What I'm hearing is that he's gotten a permit and we've brought, it's not a violation, but we never did a violation notice to this gentleman. But, but we understand that there is something that needed to be addressed and that was those, those trees. So why don't we give it a time limit because we don't know if, how long it's going to go through planning and if they're going to approve it and whatever else, what other things happen. So we could say if he withdraws, this application, we're going. We're going to require him to do this planting, but we can't require him to do the new planting. We have to just. Do, we have to maintain the, the five trees that were that were coming down. We you, can put that in. I, I would agree, and, and I think and we if would, we could the allow, time frame, so uh, yeah. So I think if we could out. allow a reasonable amount of time, I, I think that's perfect, Chuck. I, I think that because allows us to not. I don't know not, when that is because he's got three years for the permit. That's right. And it could take him a certain amount of time to get through the, the, the other departments and then it could then he could it could be the wrong time of year again and then it could so also be appealed so that could continue it on further right. so that's why I have asked for it to be kept a separate issue because it really should be rectified the decision that Mr. Palmer made to take steps into his own hands without coming before the board should be separate from what is now being considered. And so why wouldn't you, you have in meeting minute notes that you would contemplate fining, you know, from months ago, and yet still we are sitting here without this being resolved. So why can't we just resolve this issue and then move on to the next issue. I guess my my position is that this commission is, is trying to resolve the issue. I think we we found a a, a a form of mitigation as part of this project where the applicant has clearly identified that he's going to replace it. I do like the idea that there should be a timeline set that we would like to see this. If not, we we need to we need to talk about some other route. And I, I guess I would look to the applicant of... I think a year, because you're right. We may be stuck in planning board the rest of the... Well, we're going to be stuck with planning board the rest of the fall. I so, see that again, now. why can't Can you... I finish saying well, something? Well, I mean, this I mean, is... I mean, I get a chance Scott, to talk to hey, It is ridiculous, though. Please. It's been a year already. Trisha, please. I'm just saying. I know. We know but, you're saying. But it, it, Mr. Bramman's right. It... You can't plant these trees in the winter. You know that. They'll die. So you, you've got a small... And that's where we were last winter. <laughs> well, and I think you're correct. You could take a while, but what if you guys had an idea of putting um, a time limit on the planting of the ones that were... No, no, no. no? I, I'm, I'm going to explain my idea. You guys can modify it. I'm just going to throw it out there. What I thought was... Whatever time it takes to get through the planning board, and and not that I'm putting a time limit on it, and I wasn't saying take the permit, take the violation out. It's not a violation, but you 
call it a violation so you understand what I'm talking about. Take the violation I out of this. I'm going to say keep. Well, I didn't call it. It doesn't work, does it? Can Chuck finish? It doesn't work, does it, with you, Patricia? Huh? Please. So here, here we're going to try again. So the violation, which was the trees, the five trees, I said that if Mr. Palmer decides to withdraw or he gets beyond the three years that this permit accepts, then he, is re he would be required to at least plant those four or five trees, whatever it is, I forgot, but whatever those are, he has to do that within six months. You know, something like that. So that's, that's what, no, you guys can modify it. So I, I think the applicant offered a shorter time period, and, and I, I like the idea of at least having him come in at, after 12 months and say, where, where is this at? What is going on? That way we could at least at that point set the standard of, well, this looks like it's, it's not moving anywhere. Because I, I don't want to see this three years down the road, three and a half years down the road, that we have to look at this and say, well, did those those five trees never got planted. I, I would prefer a much shorter time frame than that. And, and I think the sure, 12 months I, that we're looking at... I would at only it, add to that that unless he has to start construction within 12 months... Yeah. I think it allows us to at so least look at finished. it. So Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's fine. Can I just throw something out that would, would it be amenable and reasonable to have this begin within 12 months of you getting approval for the plan of wood. Or plant the trees. That's what I was about or, to say. Or plant the or trees. Or plant the trees. Right. If he doesn't do the project for some right. reason, right. then he has to plant trees. And I was giving it a limit of 12 months because if he does do the project, he's probably at this point going to be starting in the spring, clearing the land, getting it ready, starting to pave. It's probably a, you know, a month-long process. And if he does it right, he'll be able to plant in the spring. If he well, gets the late... Can I please finish? If he gets delayed a little bit and it's in the heat of the summer, you don't want to plant these trees in July, so he may wait till this time of year next year. So I said 12 months, let's say from September 1st, 2020. And that, that's your best bet. I would also like to add, if you know the Weather Protection Act talks about, I don't want to use the word violations, but if you don't comply with an order of conditions, you have the right to issue an enforcement order. Almost all enforcement orders state, as a first thing, is the applicant shall file a notice of intent. That's what they, uh, every enforcement order I've ever seen says you have to come in and file a notice of intent for this. So if you did issue an enforcement order, you would be saying file a notice of intent, which is what we're doing. So I, I, I don't know if the abutter knows that, but that's I what usually that. happens. No, I, I know that, but, I, but what you just said in my opinion, makes it more important to have a buffer now. And why can't you just plant something that would provide a buffer that could be planted between now and before the winter? Because if it goes forward, which I am hoping it does not, and construction, as you say, begins in the spring, it would be even more important to have a buffer in place to not have to, to view that out your window since it should have not been taken down in the first place. It isn't a new prospect that you're introducing as part of the project. It's something that should be corrected because it was done when it shouldn't have been done. <coughs> You can't, okay, let me ask you. You can't plant the trees before the project gets laid out and graded, obviously. We can't just go out there, plant trees, and then come back. On the and side of have the... to cut the trees because you've got to get so Exactly. You've got to get that stuff But around. I'm talking about on the, the buffer, not where his, the proposed new parking is. In between <coughs> the back entrance of the restaurant, and the pro and my property. That isn't shouldn't be affected by what you do for additional parking if you ever get it approved. There aren't any plantings there, are there? No, there are. There's the Aprovides. There are Aprovides. And there's two red maples. Oh, red Again, they have to be at the right grade. So 
I mean, fair is fair, though, you know? Any other comments? So before the, I just want to bring sure. up the point that past 15 feet into this area, nothing's changed. It is the way it is. And it'll remain that way until someone breaks ground. The, like trees, the, trees, weren't, the trees weren't taken from the back of the fence. The, the trees we counted were volunteer growth along the back of the building. The four and trees that they're proposing to take down haven't been taken down yet. Which is and the grading hasn't tree. happened yet. Right. So the shade, whatever was going to be there if this was denied, is, is there now. Except for that little, that encroachment in there, which if you look at, you know, Are like you this, in that one this picture here, those trees are there. What trees? There's like five trees that came down that there's stumps on the ground. Can I, can I ask the applicant, um, which, uh, which plant, what is the, f can the plantings proceed regardless of the planning? No, there has to be, it has to be graded. You know how it is, you have to right. grade it, it has to okay. be at the right elevation, so otherwise you're gonna end up. So we, why, Mr. so we can, can, so can I answer the, the question? Where they will so, back to where they will. So we can. can question 17 more times. No. So we can put it in our order of conditions that that the arborvitae have to be planted within certain number of growing seasons. We, we have an agreement. We have yeah. something to do. <laughs> one year from the planning board. Can I also add one other thing? We're talking about trees, which are aesthetic issues. Don't forget that we're it's here habitat. for protection of wetlands. So um, It's a habitat issue, it is too. Habitat, yeah. It's a multiple purpose. But I don't think, well, I'll leave it at that. So, um, so I move, um, we have before us, so let me just make sure. So we have before us the letter, the replacement plan. Have you addressed and, all the questions? From and you? the sketch. Yeah. Do we, are there any other butters? I, yeah, there are uh, other I just have one quick question. In your name. Peter Anastasi, Laney Elm Drive. Yep. <clears throat> Are these trees coming down right here? Is that what's coming down? And let me go back. I mean, this to is your this is your boundary line, right? right. Yeah. No, those trees are back here that you were pointing to. The trees that are coming down are these four: one, two, three, four. Can you put the past picture up, Mom, sure, sure please. Uh, give me a second. Is it here? Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I just want to make sure. There one. You're yeah. In here. Yeah. 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 So this is all staying there. Correct. Yeah. So the wetland is back here. Correct. How far of a buffer now will be from the wetland? The project is 35 feet from the wetland flags. So 35 feet. And your parking lot is not going to extend the parking lot next door to you. Is that on the other right? plan? I think the parking lot is not on the other plan. No. Mm -hmm. parking lot's not there. But it's the, the other parking lot went up to this point. So you're not any further than correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sounds like that. So we. Is he here? Is proper to reach the same stuff? So you're going to be. You're going to grow right here. We're going to be right here. And the tr you're not taking these trees down. You're taking down trees. Correct. Right here. Okay. Thank you. And there's two cutouts, Dad. I mean, there's two cutouts on the plan, so it doesn't really, it's this one here right. and this one here, so. Whatever's in there for vegetation will stay. Yeah, it will yeah. stay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm good. All right, Jack, thank you. Can I sit down? Yeah. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Going on so motion? We had a, uh, a draft. Order. 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 Uh, I make a motion to issue notice of intent. Uh, order conditions 270 0717. 
as amended with my post-it, a little spelling change, Chuck. <laughs> I checked that on the email. Are you sure? Did you check her email? I did check my email, but... Okay, that's good. Might I've, be good to... I've been known to... Oh, I think I just saw it when you were scrolling through, what I imagined. You just closed. <laughs> you did. I, I just... Can you... Chuck, can you throw that picture up that I was looking at a minute ago? I just want to show him our boundary. See this? <coughs> this is ours from here across. This is all ours. So they own in here. Bobby's concerned that they're trash. And their dumpster sometimes blows into here. Same thing with these guys. Mm -hmm. We're constantly in here picking up papers and coffee cups and all of that stuff. So that's oh, another matter. Yes, but this is all ours. Yeah, it's, it's a fence around. All of this is ours. It's a fence. It's a uh, enclosure I, and a fence around the dumpster. I think there's a fence around that, but I'd encourage you to. A fence around the dumpster. The dumpster. Well, he's showing a fence. He's showing. A it is a, it's no, but it doesn't. Enclosure. It doesn't have a. Top, it, does it have a top on it? No, I don't. It, think I don't think it has a top dumpster. on it. So if the dumpster is. I, I know. The, the, the dumpster has a top, but the, the enclosure doesn't. Like and they get overfilled, and the raccoons get at it, and they drag it out into the wetland. That's 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 a health that's a, that's a health department, 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 department too. I, I know that's a different story. And I think yeah. that would I mean, be taken care of. We don't want to see that happening either. Yeah. Well, it happens. I mean, it happens everywhere. It's just a matter of getting in there and cleaning it up. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you want to go vote? We didn't vote. I think it's about 15 thank people have told me that. Thank you. Initially, I'm going to stop. You're scrolling through. Three seconds. <laughs> How did I get it right? I'll second, so easy, just in case. case. Uh, and I only know because I've seen so many Mike? emails. Oh, and you seconded? Yeah. All those in favor? Issue. Order condition. Yeah. I gave Chuck some minor edits. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't need. I supposed to be a simple job. Oh my job. Oh my. Oh. Now. This time I'm gonna come in with a nice easy one. How's that? Just uh. Just get those plantings in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Oh Let me get this to you guys before we forget. It's uh. Don't um. Yeah. Sign. Don't write on the signature page, but you can make any other notes you want. And you guys have all seen this. I sent it to you yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're trying to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to do the certificate of compliance? Well, let's. Is this the? Is this this guy waiting? Let's make him sit here a little bit longer. Because <laughs> um, I think I know it's. Is this 82 uh, Fairchild Drive? It is. Okay. By the way, there's no charge for entertainment tonight. Oh, all right. <laughs> that, that's something else. Um, yeah, so I'm here on behalf of Bill Scott. He could make the 8 o'clock appointment. I'm sure he could have made the 10.30, though. I should have let him know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so my name is Leighton Knapp. I own Greater Boston Tree Service, and I cut the trees at his house. And so it's my understanding that when I got there and I initially talked to Bill, I said, hey, Bill, you're the call conservation. He said, yeah, I already did, and the normal process and all that. I said, all right, great. So we picked out a bunch of trees that he wanted. First, that he wanted to get cut down at different options to do with them. And um, so when I, I had done the work about a month after that, and when I had gone back to do the work, he said, hey, everything's all set. It looks good. And as far as I was concerned, everything was, was good to go. And we were cutting down the trees along the side of the driveway. And uh, well, we weren't cutting them down, we were trimming them, just the dead branches off them. And while the climber was up on the ball of the crane looking at the tree, one of them had a bunch of cracked branches in it. And so I said, Bill, well, while we're up there, if we remove all these cracked branches, the tree's probably going to die. Fall. And so I believe it was his understanding at the time that if he were to cut any of those trees down, that he'd either have to pay some sort of a fee to the commission or he'd have to plant trees to help protect the wetlands. And um, so he, he said, all right, yeah, I'm prepared to do that. Go ahead, you can cut it down, and, and I'll do what's necessary. Um, and so he called me, and he told me a situation that he messed up somehow. He didn't file paperwork correctly and this and that. And so he told me he couldn't make it. So I came out here on his behalf. His, just in dealing with them, I deal with a lot of people that try to skate around you guys and they're real sneaky and real deceitful. And um, that's not him, as far as I could tell from working with him, which I don't know the guy through a hole in the world. I just cut his trees. And I did work for, um, I think, his wife's friend, and, and she referred me to him. 
that's why I came out here just on his behalf, just to, to, to let you guys, well, let you know what went on from my side. Yeah. Okay. Do we have an enforcement order, Chuck? We do. We have an enforcement order. Uh, so, me and, uh, so, so, Bill, Bill Scott, Scott, Bill yeah, Scott. Um, I get a call from Bob Moses, and he's Arbitry, and Bob said, hey, can I, I want you to come out to the site. This guy wants some trees. I know he's close to the wetland. So I met Bill out at the property, and we talked about the trees. We, understanding what needs to happen, Bill's, most of Bill's problem was the fact that the acorns fell on his car. And he didn't want those trees there. He didn't like where else he could park. I guess it was, it was a basketball net or something. And so anyways, the acorns are falling on the car and another tree needed to go. I have a picture of a tree near the shed. The wetland's right in the back of the shed. It actually comes up along the side a little bit. Um, and he was talking about doing a retaining wall and doing some terraces to try to get more of a yard. And so we talked about permits for what a retaining wall would be, permits for trees that are close to the wetland area, and then maybe some back and back of the house was up and over the hill or by the other road that um, maybe didn't need a permit. But in my opinion, not only was it clear that he needed a permit before he, he got the work done, but I know that Bob Moses talked to him and was talking to him after I left, trying to say, this is, this is you know, what we can do, but you're gonna need a permit. And so even Bob was telling him that a permit was needed. Um, it, you know, I was, I was pretty shocked when I got a phone call that all this clearing had been, had been done and I didn't remember the house or the number, but when I went there and I saw the shed, I'm like, my God, I was, I was here. We were clearly told this guy that he needed a permit. Um, he, he did call me and he said that he misunderstood the situation and, and I didn't understand how that could have happened. Um, and I asked him that, you know, where else can you do work before, you know, you get permission to do it? Because that seemed to be the whole premise where he was, he felt, you know, on site. And, and I said, well, you know, bring the story to the commission and just make sure you don't miss the meeting. And I think that's why you're here because I think Bill's out of town. So, you know, I don't know how to judge what, what he said, but I know that I believe that it was extremely clear about cutting the trees down. And it sounds like he talked to several people. So maybe if he called Bob Moses and other tree companies that work with the conservation office, that it was clear that you have to, you have to get a permit first. And the thing about the permit, just so you know, it's like we have a tree policy. So everyone in town can take down some trees very easily. So it's it's no it's no longer a, uh, takes up a lot of time, and you're going to get denied. I tell everybody. Yeah. So it's 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 okay. But then when someone doesn't do it, it's you know we really haven't been here in a while. Yeah. But you know I know we haven't dealt with you guys, but I, I do want you to know you should look at our tree policy, and we our, our policy is that the contractor is part of the violation, so is the homeowner, and our tree guidance tells you how to take down trees and either get a administrative approval right there in the office without even coming to one meeting, or if it's over a certain number, yeah, you get to come to a meeting and then there's a, there's a way to still take the trees down as long as you replace them. All right, yeah, absolutely. So it, it ends up being a win for everyone because one of the ways that they talked about is paying money. The paying money part is we capped the homeowners at 250 a tree, capped at $500. Those, that money goes right to the Shade Tree Fund, and then Mike Hannaford gets to plant trees all around town. And, and every time I walk down there, they're like, oh great, another, you know, another check. And it seems to be working out for the homeowners and for the town. So that's, that's as I know it. So do you have any, um, any sense from uh, Bill Scott about what he intends to do next. Is he going to 
Is he proposing to do anything? So in, in talking to him before, especially about that tree next to the shed you see right there, uh, I think it was always his intention that he was going to put other trees in there, that he knew that he had to do something, or that he either had to pay monies or plant trees. And speaking with them, it's evident that he wanted to just plant the trees there. And uh, whatever would help the wetlands, I told him that he'd have to you know, orchestrate that with you guys. I'm sure you have certain species of trees that you like to be planted in certain areas like that. Okay, so it seems pretty clear to me by this violation that the two things that need to happen are uh, the soil has to be stabilized for possible erosion and additional, the vegetation has to be restored. So those look like the two things. Yeah. And pretty much the corner by the shed looks like it would really <coughs> help the, the wetland area over there. A lot of the other trees were all to the right of that and um, some were over by the street. But that one there, like I said to him too, that's definitely something that you'd have to address. That's for sure. But he is prepared to um, plant trees and do whatever needs to be done. And, and, and he is eager to, to, to work it out with you guys. I had told him too we could try to rearrange a date to do this. I didn't know exactly how the, the commissions work out here or whatnot. And if it was a fixed date. Chugger all of the trees within the our jurisdiction. I believe the, I mean, I didn't go on the property to count. Those pictures mostly are from the driveway, the edge of the driveway on the street. But we could go back and take a more accurate count. So, so you're saying the, that I can't the believe 15 they got up on to 15. The I, I, well, there's, there's trees that line the entire okay. back of the house. Like from, from when I, I just, and again, I didn't go on either. I, I did drive back from when I saw something. I, I didn't have 15 in my head as, as the number that was gone. I'd, I'd like to get back out there, put it on, I'm going to propose we put it on another site visit. Um, I guess, too, I mean, I'm not sure what, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. So what I would suggest is that we coordinate it at a time that, even if it has to be beyond our normal site visits, uh, a time that works for Mr. Scott to actually walk us through each one and if that makes that makes sense. We may get a better idea of what he's looking to do from that. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to watch this um, get kicked down the road. I so too, too see much. The, I'd like to um, draw in the line about the 100 on feet this. about there, and that's where I would estimate. I'll turn this back. I'll turn this off so you guys can see better. But. So I think the wetland shows it here, but it's 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 more in this area here. That's where I could tell. Yeah. And so it's about a hundred feet, and there was there was a lot. This 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 um, deck was rotted because of the shading of the trees. So there's a few up here. There was one or two down here. There was two over here. No, I can so point you out where the trees were that I cut. Mm -hmm. So. There's the one right here that was next to the shed. I believe there was three right here on the hill, which is right next to the porch. There were six small pine trees way over here by the street. And then, I'm not sure what you guys count as, as far as trees by diameter-wise. There were, it was like shrubbery, kind of not really arborvitaes. It might have been a species, but shrubbery where it probably had, you know, a stem like this at the bottom where it branched out. But there were pretty much bushes. So there were, there were the three or four trees up here. Um, those were all on the hill and they were on the rock, the rock wall and whatnot. This was the only tree that I definitely told them, well, that's definitely a conservation issue, it's something that you would have to remedy. You couldn't simply remove that tree from the environment and expect it to be the same. But all the other trees that, that I saw, there, there was stuff that I told them, you know, it, w it wouldn't make sense to me to, to do anything to, to replace it or, It's not, yeah, we just, that's the site walk. We won't be able oh, yeah, to yeah, absolutely. at that point. We have a site walk to have a, get some kind of sense as to what would be within a 100-foot jurisdictional area. Yeah. And then look and count up the trees. Yeah. And then see what the homeowner wants to do, whether it's a combination of paying towards a shade tree fund or just replacing all the trees. So I think that's, so that's, that's route one. I, I think as a second thing I would just say is, you know, uh, obviously at this point, you you yourself are, are now much, I hope, much more aware of our system 
Um, you know, this, as Chuck has said, we generally we, we hold the contractors accountable and the enforcements as well. Uh, I, I would hope that if you do work in many near the near the wetlands again, that you're familiar with our policy that that you use Chuck as a resource if you need to. Oh, absolutely. Um, and and you request from the homeowner if you've put it on the homeowner that you see whatever the paperwork. And that's what I was just going to ask. So I didn't know how far my you know. My due diligence when I always go out to say, did you talk, talk to conservation? Did you get what you need to get? I didn't know if it's something where I should say, hey, can I see the permit or can you photocopy? We have a permit, and, it, and he would have had a permit so if he something you can process. photocopy. Uh, if, if we we an email a per we would email a permit to anyone in town that uh, goes through the process, and the process should only take a couple days, and um, you, they'd have a permit, and they. So what should happen is you go out there to do your estimate, and you say, do you have do you have yeah, the permit from the Conservation Commission? And they, and they show you the permit. It says tree permit right on it. Describes the work that we've approved. So you, you can't change what's been approved. Um, unless that's a phone call to me. But I unless it's an emergency situation. If it's an emergency situation, then you know, then you come in after the fact. The tree's broken. It's hanging on your, your house. You don't have to come in and ask you to cut it down. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's, there's an emergency that's a true emergency yeah, situation in in our tree policy yeah so so many times that we have people come in saying that it was an emergency and the tree's gone and you can't really you can't really tell well, this case. I think this is, my point would be we hope we don't see you back here <laughs> um, but, but we do have a, a mechanism to, to find if you know, we see repeat offenders um, and, and I think that's something that this commission wants to pay attention to if we're seeing this happen more often. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm looking at deadlines in the enforcement order, and the first deadline is tonight for the owner to attend this meeting. Um, I understand he wasn't able to make it. Um, it's unfortunate. Um, but... Um, Let's see if he takes this enforcement order seriously going forward, because it does have the force of law. Oh, absolutely. And it would be good to remedy this situation as quickly as possible. So, Chuck, do you have any means of getting a hold of this bill, Scott? Yes. So, can we tentatively set up a couple dates that might people might be available? Sure. And you want to meet Mr. Scott on the property? That's, yeah. Yeah. I would suggest our normal site walk time, but but if that doesn't work for that, I, mean, I, I want. Yeah, this is an enforcement order. I think we should act. I think we should get on this. And yeah, he's self-employed. I'm sure he can make yeah. himself available for you guys. Yeah. Sure. Tell me a date. Which date? What time do you want to go to? Day, you want to go out Seven. next week on Tuesday? Anybody available on Tuesday next week? I am away on Tuesday. I'm pretty sure I can make it next, uh, maybe Wednesday. Okay, how about Wednesday? No, next Wednesday. Oh, next okay, let's go to the next week. Oh, how about Tuesday around 9 30? Next go. week. I yeah. can't make that, but. Drive by. I could drive by Wednesday. So, you so I'll get permission from uh, Mr. Scott <coughs> to allow the commission to walk onto his property if he can't make the regular site walk agenda, which is going to be exactly when we said Tuesday. Um, and then anyone that can't make it can go down and check out the trees. Carl and I could go on Wednesday. Yeah, I could do Wednesday after, like, after 4 p.m. Yeah. Okay. What date? So what's that? Uh, 29th. 21. 20, oh, yeah, 28. 20. 28th is next Wednesday. Next Wednesday is yes, the 21st. Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. 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 Oh, so what are we talking next? Next week or the week after? Next Tuesday is the 20th. Next Wednesday is the 21st. <laughs> I can do the 21st. Okay. The following week, I can't. You're going to be traveling, aren't I? Yeah. 
Okay, the 21st should work for me. We just need approval. Yeah. By the property owner. Okay. Probably make that as well. 21st after 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Just drive by, Dave. All right. Uh, okay, so that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Right. Thank you. Sorry for taking up too much of your time. I hope you guys have a good night. You too. Thank you. Did, did we sign one already? One of the certificates? No, we had that's right here. Sign. The two. You have two? Yeah. Yep. The Drawing four conditions back. are here. Oh, I didn't sign the other Do one. Do we have to sign the enforcement order? Yeah. The, no. Sorry. Did I sign that one? Yeah, you signed this one and this one. There's only two of them, right? Still we have a uh, certificate of compliance for Do middle it. lane. Okay. I want to make a motion. Can I make a motion to issue the enforcement order at... This is not a... 82? Fairchild? 82 Fairchild. Second. All those in favor? Um... What? <laughs> this is, um... Yeah, you can sign it. This is there anything else? This is... Is that ready to go? Yeah. Chuck? Uh, What's that? Oh, that lane, is that yeah, that's in front of Mike. Uh, someone needs to kind of work it through the system, okay. make the motion. But Mike's dealing with the enforcement order. Okay. The next on the agenda is uh, a certificate of compliance from Lanetta Lane. Uh, me and Becky went out there, and Dave. Day? Yeah, well, no, it was Mike. Me, Becky, and Mike went out there on a rainy day, and the only thing that came up uh, was the fact that we couldn't see all the granite bounds. But the applicant uh, sent me pictures of all the granite bounds, proving that they're all in place. Which so one this? this is Lanetta. 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 I remember it was pouring. It's late. Lanetta. I thought that was so Kylie Drive. Which one is the one It's right. Off it's right off of Franklin Street near the cemetery there, across the street from the cemetery. Yeah, Wood End Cemetery, Lanetta Lane. This isn't the one that we said uh, to cut back. And am I confusing? Yeah, that was that was Kylie. Kylie Drive. Oh, that's the one with the yes, trail. This is Bill Lombard. That was John McGee. <laughs> Both <laughs> homes. Both it's Nova still, home builders and which now no because now, now it's still one of the most which one was the one that in install the drain and, and the said. drain correctly that was John was McGee yes and he called his person that was going to do that and they said we're yeah we know what you're talking about we'll be right on it um I I make a motion to issue second Bill all those in favor. What else you got for us? You got minutes. Did we review the minutes? I sent them out. <laughs> can I get a motion to, unless there, does everyone, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of 8 10 2016? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? I move we approve the minutes of July 22, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Second motion for 8-23-2017. Second. No. Can I get a second? There's a second. Motion. So, Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Just roll with it. All those in favor? Last one. And EK, want to take it on? Six. 26-2019. Can I get a motion to... So moved. Second. Proof All those in favor? That was a good one. All right. Got that. We signed the Nova. We signed Lanetta. 
Sir, Mama. What do your notes say? Anything else? There's something here about Millet, Millet Trail Conservation. Committee. That Millet Tra that Millet Trail Day did not happen. But uh, can you, if everyone uh, here and anyone watching, if they could yes. check out the Trails Committee Facebook page to volunteer at the Millet right. site and other sites around town, they update that page a lot. It's the Reading Trails Committee Facebook page, and um, that's really great. And Becky, you want to make an announcement for to try to get our. We have six members, and we would like a seventh member. So there's a spot open on the Conservation Commission. We're looking for associate members or full-time. We have one full-time seat open right now. Good why job, wouldn't Becky. We, why, Becky wouldn't, why wouldn't we go for a full-time? We have two. So we have associate members. So some people. I'm just telling you what's out there. <laughs> I always ask the same questions. Like, easy you know, to so We're going to fill a real Don't show up. There is. There is. What is it? Two? It's two. two. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Oh, wait. You just show up and then you can't vote. So you Bob had an opportunity to be an associate member? No, not you. <laughs> uh, no. Bob is still here at six. No. Yeah. Seven. Okay. We, we would have seven. One. So thank you, Becky, for that. Um, Good job, Becky. Good job. What? Well, asking for asking for the members. Appreciate that. Anything else on your notes? Uh, we did the enforcement order. We did. And there's no report on these administrators report. That was it. That's all I could say. There's not. Motion to no, adjourn. There there not. What's this? A second. There's more. No, nope, we have a motion on the floor. And it's seconded. All those in favor. Meeting adjourned. Uh, I